I am getting such chills hearing that music. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nancy Drew, Message in a Haunted Mansion. And I am having such a nostalgia attack right now. I am so excited to play this. Because me and this game, we got history. Now, I was actually given this game as a gift from my grandma for starting my first day of first grade. Uh, kind of advanced for me, but I was into this kind of stuff because I had already read a couple of Nancy Drew books that I had found in the attic. But the thing is, I never did finish it, but I do have some very intense, very formative memories of this game. The puzzles were always a little bit difficult for me. I wasn't the greatest reader just yet, so I wasn't really sure exactly what I was supposed to be doing a lot of the time. But because of the creepy vibe that this game put out, I was also often too scared to advance, even if I did know what to do. Well, let's get started, shall we? This is an old-school adventure game, so I expect to be confused. Hi, it's Nancy Drew. Welcome to my latest cyber mystery, Message in a Haunted Mansion. Choose your difficulty level to start off. If you're new to adventure games, you might want to click on the tutorial button to learn how to play the game. Ah, uh, I ain't no weenie. We don't need a tutorial, but I think I am going to go with Junior Detective. Only because I'm pretty sure the way these games work is that on the Junior Detective setting, the puzzles are a little bit easier. And there are certain types of puzzles which I just can't stand. Like, if there are sliding box puzzles in this game, I want them to be as simple as possible. Before I get going, just so you know, this company puts out like one to three of these games every year. And they've been doing it for like 20 plus years, so there's tons and tons of these games. I had several of them growing up, and this was my favorite, of course, but it was only many years later that I finally finished one, something of the Crystal Skull. So I more or less have an idea of what to expect from these games. I just want the puzzles to be a little less frustrating so I can keep a move on for, like, commentary's sake. Dear Beth, hello from stormy San Francisco. This time I'm staying in a beautiful Victorian mansion. You'd love the room I'm in. It's full of old Chinese furnishings and some interesting knickknacks. The owner of the house, Rose Green, is a friend of Hannah and asked me to come out and help her with some renovation work. She and her friend Abby hope to turn the place into a bed and breakfast by next month. But from what I gather, Rose isn't sure if she can open in time. Ever since they started the renovations, they've had a lot of accidents. Could it be just bad luck, or is there something more sinister at work? <laughs> I'm sure I'll find out. Love, Nancy. Okay, so here we are. And you can see that a big draw of these games is the artwork and the music. I spent just as much time just kind of walking around admiring the house as I did actually trying to solve the mystery, which, like I said, I never actually did succeed in doing, so uh, this is kind of a spiritual journey from the heart of first grade me. Well, let's have a look around and see what we can learn. That's what this is all about in the end, is trying to learn as much as we can and do a whole lot of speculating as we go, forming ideas and theories, and deciding which ones we want to pursue. Daughters of Diligence earn the gold of nine dragons. I'm sure that'll mean something significant later. Oh, I just love that 90s 3D look that this game has. Even though it's made up of all fixed still images, it's still got that sort of artwork of... I'm not really sure how to put it. 90s games just had this certain... appeal to them. Oh, now here we can set an alarm. Now from what I understand, this game does actually have a working time cycle. And so certain events will only trigger at certain times, certain people will only be in certain places, and everyone in the house kind of has a schedule. So that's kind of interesting, and actually pretty ahead of its time, I think. Oh, 
what's this? Listen, my child, to this story of dreams, and know that the beginning is more difficult than it seems. When the ten daughters are reunited in order, when the four-sided box loses its border, when the eye of the phoenix is in your hand, when the bird of fire can see again, when the moon sleeps and the sun plays, the king of the sky will shine his ray, and hidden beneath a river of colors will lie a gate to golden wonders. Oh, well, just based off of the four-sided box loses its border, I'm guessing this is a hint at every puzzle in the game, is it not? Now, depending on the length of this, I'm not quite sure yet if this is going to be a series or if I'm just going to edit it together all at once, but I'm certainly going to be finishing it before I upload it, and we'll just see what style works best. But uh, without further ado, let's step out of our room and meet the cast of rogues. Oh my, that's creepy. <laughs> Looking out there almost feels like a dream. Wandering down the hall, the background's so blurry. Uh, watched by all these strange portraits. Ooh, is that a dumbwaiter? Uh, but it looks like we can't look inside. I just... Oh, I can't resist the urge to snoop. It's in my nature. But we should probably be meeting with our host first. That should be our first goal. Is this the front door? No, this leads to the entry hall. Actually, this place is a little bit creepily empty. That was always one of the big things about this game, was that... You always felt so alone. The characters in these games, as you'll come to see, are really, really stiff. They almost feel more like, well, Chuck E. Cheese animatronics than real people. And it makes the place feel so creepy. Uh, hello, anyone here? This must be some kind of study. I remember I think we could do something on the laptop over there. And that looks very much like a face in the wood paneling. Oh, there's so much stuff to snoop at, but I, I just, I, I gotta find people first to point me in the right direction. Can we go through here? No. It seems that for now, that door is going to be blocked off by the scaffoldings. What about these double doors at the end of the hall? Ah! <laughs> God, that is some weird movement. And actually, looking at it now, look how disconcerting it is that these characters are basically just... These badly aliased animations just superimposed over these actually really nice backgrounds. Hello, Nancy. I'm very glad you could come out here. We can really use your help, seeing how far we are behind schedule. Are you all ready to do some renovation work? They are so much worse than I remember. And I remember them being pretty bad. Uh, oh, I had forgotten about this. We actually have dialogue options. Uh, this is a Telltale game. She'll remember what I say. Uh... We could get straight into it, but let's play a little dumb first. I sure am. This house must have quite a history. What do you know about it? Not very much, but Abby found some interesting old papers that might give us clues about the history of the house. They're in the parlor if you want to take a peek. There's also an old time saloon in the basement, so it's possible the house was once a hotel. Oh, we've got a mysterious past to this place, huh? Yeah, I'll definitely have to go to the parlor and check out those papers. Learning about this place is going to be the first thing we have to do. Uh, who was the original owner? A saloon? 
Uh, this place really does have a history. Who was the original owner? Almost all the records on these old houses were destroyed in the Great Earthquake, so we don't know much about the origins of the place. Abby thinks all our accidents were caused by some restless spirit or a curse. I'm not one to believe in bad luck, but it's been one thing after another. Maybe Charlie doesn't have the expertise for these renovations, but his rates are so affordable. I sometimes wonder, though, if this old house would be worth more burned to the ground. Enough chit-chat. Hannah tells me you're a real pro with puzzles. Take a look in the corner. Those wood tiles should fit inside the inlay pattern of the floor. Abby and I tried for hours, but it's just too complicated. I'm sorry for not introducing you around, but everyone posts their schedule here in the dining room. It's kind of like Command Central. Let me know how far you get with that puzzle. And thanks again for helping us, Nancy. Very interesting. We're actually learning a lot right off the bat. Abby's the one insisting that it's a haunting. And you know, you're right. If you are in too deep, maybe this place would be worth more burned to the ground for the insurance money. Hmm, okay, so based off of very, very little, prime suspect Abby, who we have yet to meet. Uh, schedule, uh, oh wow, this is actually a little bit difficult to read. I'm playing on a 4K monitor, so this is actually a little bit blurry. Uh, something, can't read that quite. Uh, noon to 5 p.m., Charlie from 8 to 5, and Abby is out from 3 to 6. Now, can we see what time it is right now? Ah, oh, we can. So currently, it is 10 o'clock on the dot. Okie dokie. I wonder how time moves. I wonder if it moves in a linear fashion, or only when we perform certain actions, or what? In any case, we can sleep to advance time. Uh, before I try your puzzle, I'm going to have a look in the parlor at those newspapers. I'll listen to the sound of that ticking clock. But I don't... Ah, oh, there you are. Can't interact with you, though. I, I, I always found the soundtrack so incredibly eerie. It's the kind of soundtrack that makes me feel like I'm alone in this old house. And that some unseen spirit or monster is creeping around as we speak, looking for me. <laughs> Okay. Okay, didn't remember that. In fact, I don't remember any scares. I don't remember any overt scares, so this is all going to come as a complete surprise to me. And if we're doing renovations, maybe we want to grab a feather duster and remove those cobwebs under the table? I bet there's going to be something there, right? Going to be a whole lot of clicking around, guys. <laughs> it is an adventure game. Uh, subterranean San Francisco, explore the hidden world that lies beneath the city. Hmm. Exploring the labyrinth below, few people know the fascinating world below the streets of San Francisco, and yet a myriad of strange and mysterious sights lie in the subterranean darkness, only to be uncovered by the intrepid urban explorer. Over the past- wow, that's actually a really early use of the term. Over the past 20 years of city spelunking, I found old mines, abandoned utility tunnels, secret rooms, and many old wells and cisterns. Careful attention must be paid when searching the lost areas to avoid accidents. A good light source, building plans, and a hard hat are a must. San Francisco has gone through many changes over its 400-year-old history. The continual cycle of building, disaster, and rebuilding has created an intricate vertical record of urban development. Many of the... Oh, but that's as far as we can read. You know, I'm starting to wonder, since she talked about the bar in the basement, maybe this house connects onto something as well. Okay guys, now it's at this point that I've exited the game and come back to check on the recording. Because this is a very, very old game, circa 2000 or 2001. 
And so getting it to record at all has been a little bit on the difficult side, and I can't actually see OBS on my second monitor right now. So I just kind of had to take it on faith that it was recording properly, but uh, some folks on Reddit helped me out, and uh, I've got it going pretty well now. And so far, so good. But just letting you know that if any complications arise, uh, that's why. It is just a very old game. Now, let's uh, have a further peek around. It looked like I could look at maybe these boxes. Yeah, I wonder if these are some of the old papers Abby was talking about. Uh, some kind of telephone company record. A list of subscribers, June 18th, 1894. Hmm. Some mining companies. Oakland Express. West Coast Furniture. Uh, nothing that stands out to me at the moment, but I'm sure it's stuff that'll be important later on. Do we know the address of this place? Actually, come to think of it, I should probably be writing physical notes, shouldn't I? Oh, that's gonna be really exciting! I haven't done that since I played the Paints Creek Killings, which is a game that I played on my own a couple years ago, but I would have loved to have played it on this channel. Uh, Maxwell Metzger and Moss. The Law Officers of Metzger and Moss, uh, 49C Telegraph Hill, San Francisco, California, September 12th, 1906. Dear Sir, we are pleased to announce that your bid for the auction property located at 4653 California Lane, okay, has been accepted. Free, uh, fee simple estate interests have now been transferred through the charitable trust set up by the property's grantor for the benefit of the Ladies Protection and Relief Society. Oh, there it is. Uh, Hotelier E. Valdez, 4653 California Street. Uh, so perhaps it was a hotel? That would make sense. Alright, binder and lap, pencil in hand, notes taken. And if this is indeed the address of this place, then it was very likely a hotel back in the late 1800s. Owned by E. Valdez. Alright, uh, well, let's go back and talk and see if we can't figure out how to solve that puzzle, since it is probably supposed to be the first thing we do, but there's more documents here. Unfortunately, we cannot mess with them, but we can use the phone. Oh, I remember that. Uh, in this game, we actually end up with a list of numbers for our contacts. Uh, but this being the age before smartphones, even in real life, uh, we do have to have all the numbers and call them from a specific point. I wonder if later games in the series change that, letting us call people from anywhere, anytime. Well, let's figure out what uh, puzzle she was talking about. Oh, that's a nice little alcove over there. What is this? Innovative ways to restore antiques, catnapping. Uh, you'll love the drama for this poster bread. Uh, materials for a twin size bed. Uh, yeah, okay, this is probably the solution to a puzzle later on, but it doesn't look like anything I need to concern myself with right now. How's that inlay puzzle coming along? Where did Abby find those Where did papers? Abby find those papers that are in the parlor. She told me they were in her room. Which surprised me, since it was completely empty when we moved in. Now the room you're staying in was crammed with furniture. I think most of it was original with the house. Hmm. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Take care. So Abby found all that stuff in her room, but if it was completely empty... Then that means there must be some kind of secret compartment that she found. Either that, or she lied about where it was. Hang on, back to the notes. Looks like, uh, parts to a bed. Actually, these kind of look like chess pieces. Or maybe the ends of the railings? I don't know. Alright, now what is that inlay puzzle you were talking about? I have still yet to locate it. Something to do with the floor? Ah, oh, right here, yes. A oh, weird thing to just have built into the house, but this should be simple enough. That looks like a compartment right there, no. 
Okay, to rotate pieces, uh, click the right mouse button. All right. And we just click and drag. Yeah, it's a little bit janky, but this doesn't look like anything we can't figure out. Will they snap into place? Uh, not really. Now, I notice that every once in a while, they'll turn and glow bright. I don't know if that's just a visual bug or if that's actually something that matters. Okay, I'm thinking now that this probably has to go in here. And then the rest of this can be used to fill out this space right here, right? So that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because now this can be filled by two triangles. The question is, which triangles? And does it matter? It's a little bit tough to tell the actual size of things in this. I mean, this looks like I'm pretty close, right? I, I don't know what more you want me to do. Oh, and it resets when you walk away? That is so annoying. Actually, you know what I'm not realizing? You know what this theme reminds me of? The intro to Mindhunter. Oh, this has definitely got me in the detective mood now. All right, come on, that's good. That's good. Presumably there's gonna be some kind of confirmation noise, right? Okay, wait, what if I put you here, right? And you here instead. Yeah. See, the problem is, like, for as laggy as you're seeing this cursor now, that's exactly as janky as it actually is for me. Which means, like, precision maneuvering is really not easy to do at all. I kind of just have to hope that it finds, like, the one pixel where I'm supposed to be. And I'm really dreading this being like a big part of the experience. Which is why I set it to Junior Detective Difficulty was partly to reduce the possibility of jank. And this game is going to indeed have lots and lots of jank. Oh, come on. There we go, it. finally. Jesus. How's that inlay puzzle coming along? I finished it. Wonderful. But now I've got something else for you. I set up a ladder upstairs so you can chip off the broken tiles on the hallway ceiling. You'll need to look around for a chisel or paint scraper for the job. I'm not sure where Charlie keeps them. Okay, so we gotta look around for some tools. You know, I feel like I didn't come here to help you with the renovations. Now, come to think of it, this Charlie is somebody we're gonna want to talk to. They say he's not that great at his job, but he's cheap, which is why they went with him in the first place. Now, you can tell this game comes from another time when people who don't have the money are renovating an old mansion. And, you know, if this place really is experiencing a string of accidents, well, that is his responsibility, isn't it? Or maybe he's the one they keep happening to. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Don't work too hard. Now, where do we find this Charlie? Uh, actually, let's check the schedule to see if he's even around now. Eight to five, so he should be here. If we check the time... Oh, wow, no. Time has actually advanced quite significantly. Um, he's actually... It should be just about leaving. Uh, here's the door to the basement. Uh, it's like we're hearing the echoes of tunes long past. Uh, just think about it, 1894? The kind of people who would be hanging out down here? And to see it all still in this state. Uh, an old register. I'm sure that'll be a puzzle for later, figuring out how we can get it open. There's a couple of boxes of matches here as well, which may prove useful. 
but we're not able to pick them up just yet. It's stuck. Hmm. Seems like there's probably going to be something beneath the grate of the fireplace. That's something to keep in mind. Oh, and the door under the table can be opened. But nothing in it. Still, these are all things to keep in mind. Remember, nothing's going to be here for no reason. Uh, ooh, tools. Uh, can we get anything from here? Ah, we got a screwdriver. You know, come to think of it, I should actually probably start taking notes not just on people and events, but on uh, specific rooms. Because there's a lot of things down here that we're going to have to call back to later. What is this? California Theater Scandal Horror Outrage Citing the increased popularity of stage reviews and decreased charitable contributions, the Ladies Protection Society has announced a shocking new strategy for raising much-needed funds for the benefit of widows and orphans in our region. No longer will the good ladies of our society hold garden parties, afternoon teas, or cakewalks to solicit contributions. Instead, these proper wives, daughters, and mothers will act on stage like common troubadours in several popular plays in order to raise money for their good works. As decent gentlemen, we should not allow the fair sex to denigrate themselves to this level of vulgarity. Women belong in the home, not upon the stage. Anything else down here? Nothing over here. Uh, newspaper, bed and breakfasts on the rise. Uh, the Bay Area has experienced an increase in the number of registered bed and breakfasts, according to Betsy Hamilton, director of the B&B &B Association of San Francisco. More and more travelers who visit our city are seeking a more personal lodging experience. The Bay Area has many alternative accommodations in addition to traditional hotels. But with the increased interest in B&B, &B, comes increased competition. We've actually seen decline in business over the last couple of years, says Roderick J. H. Torreson, owner of Old Time Lodgings in Pacific Heights. Nearly everyone with a Victorian-style home seems to have jumped on the B&B &B bandwagon. Many B&Bs are marketed toward a specific clientele, or offer different amenities to beat the competition. Janie Crisson of Dark Shadows Inn offers her clients a mystery dinner show. And it's extremely popular and profitable when the B&B distinguish itself from the rest of the pack, she says. Hotels that have some historical importance or even a legend attached to them are definitely the most popular. Hmm. Maybe it's not about the insurance money. If this Abbey is insisting on a haunting, maybe... Maybe she's right. Or maybe she's trying to pull a Scooby-Doo to bring in business once this thing is actually opened. Well, I wasn't locked in. What time is it now? Uh, 7 o'clock. I'll have to wait until tomorrow for Charlie to be here. I haven't really explored the upper floor yet, but I haven't finished exploring the lower one. Can't actually seem to access the door across the way, though. That's a little bit annoying. Yeah, this door and that door, I can't seem to actually look at. Maybe I'm sort of soft locked out of them until a certain amount of progress has been made? Tell you what, actually, uh, what if we try and use the screwdriver on the fireplace? It's stuck. No, no such luck. It's stuck. Yep, try thing on thing. Uh, get used to it. There's going to be a lot of that in this playthrough. Such as the way of adventure games. God, I do not like the way you just turn, look at me, and then go back about your business when I walk in. If we open you up. Huh, the rope's been cut. The rope is cut. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Literally. Who would want to disable the dumbwaiter? 
Or maybe that's one of the accidents this place had. Now, about this thing... We can't seem to look up. You can look at your paint bucket. Ah, there we go. Alright, so that should be all the tools we need, right? Forty-six fifty-three. Yep, just confirming pretty much what we already knew. Yeah, I, I just keep thinking about how I was just not mentally equipped to play this game back then, but now, now I'm starting to see this with an eye that enables me to do a lot more than just blind luck my way through it. Uh, maybe not the puzzles, but I am already starting to piece together sort of a narrative in my head. And with this kind of game, I actually look forward to having it challenged and revised. Uh, now, these banister heads uh, seem to have some... maybe rubies in their eyes? Uh, <laughs> I went immediately to bender mode trying to steal anything valuable, huh? You're a creepy fella. Now, we can mess with this rope right here, uh, but I... Oh, that's kind of neat. I happen to remember that doing so actually can cause you to fail. Is it just me, or did that clock sound just a little bit out of tune? I mean, that, that, that's probably the wrong thing to say, but you know what I mean. It sounded a little bit weird. Could that possibly indicate that there's something inside it? We don't have the opportunity to look at it just yet. Now, it seems to want me to note how creaky those stairs are. Does it do the same thing on this side? No, it... I see you. What?! Which one of you was it? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It was, uh... It was you. It was you, wasn't it? I don't remember anything like that! Wait. No, 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 no. That... Can we check behind that tapestry? You're really not gonna let me investigate that. We're starting to see honest-to-god evidence of hauntings far more than I ever remember from playing it, which is weird considering how creeped out I used to be of this. I must have misunderstood. There's got to be something up here that I'm meant to mess with. Because I'm not seeing any way to climb that scaffolding. Maybe right here? Ah, here we are, yes. Uh, that looks quite a bit like water damage. Okay, let's start tearing you up. That looks like the outline of a hatch! Hello! Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's but locked. it's locked. Uh, my room key's not gonna work. It's locked. No? Uh, can we maybe jimmy it with a screwdriver? It's no, locked. I didn't think so. Alright, uh, I should go back and report this. Now, I don't think there's multiple endings. Uh, part of me almost wants to keep it a secret. I mean, after all, everyone is still a suspect. We know that this lady, at the very least, is thinking about the fact that this place may be worth more as a smoking crater. How are the tiles coming along? I'm all finished, but you should know what I found. I'm sure it's very interesting, but unless it's really important, I've got other things to worry about. Let's see. If you're any good at fixing things, there's a dumbwaiter in the hallway that's not working. Uh, yeah, I'll say. Um, this is one of those times, I can't believe it's happening in a game, where a character could solve a situation by just simply explaining themselves, and I guess we're just not going to do that. Like, you had time to answer my questions about the friggin' pattern in the floor 50 times. I don't even know what that did. And yet, here we are not even wanting to hear about the secret freaking chamber that I just found in your upstairs. Uh, whatever. Probably better if you don't know. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Take care. Okay, now I've been tasked with fixing the dumbwaiter. But since I already sort of teased it, 
and I have just made a save, I guess I should probably uh, show you what happens when I decide to go mess with this rope. See, I feel like it sounded more correct that time. Hang on, let me make a note of that. Now. Lower one. Lower two. And... Lower three! Whoops. <laughs> you did what?! Um, I unhooked the chandelier and it crashed to the floor. I can't believe it! No wonder Rose asked you to leave. I don't know what got into me. Sounds like you really goofed up. Just don't vandalize the next house you stay in, okay? Especially if it's ours. <laughs> okay, yeah, these games have like a lot of little ways to fail. Uh, some of them even fatally. Um, but we do have the second chance option, which basically just acts as a reload. I'm not going to bother with that because I do just have a save game. Now this time, uh, let's... Do some annoying maneuvers to get back to the dumbwaiter. The rope is cut. See that the rope is cut. Now, I'm wondering if maybe I don't need to go upstairs to pull it up. Maybe find some new rope to replace it with. And does it actually have a spot in the basement where it goes to? See, I don't see it, but... You know, where does it go? It does look like it goes down a bit farther, doesn't it? I think in order to get to the bottom of this, we'll have to go upstairs, but I have to say, we're already experiencing some weird things here. Which means that either this place really is haunted, someone's trying to impede our progress, or both. Now, uh, we haven't really familiarized ourselves with the upstairs yet. A whole lot of rooms, but there's our dumbwaiter. Oh man, it's going to be so hard to make sense of this. But it won't actually allow me to investigate this at all. Okay, so most of these doors it won't actually let us interact with at all. But this one at the end of the hall here, that's our room. So we have to remember that it's the room on the left of the hallway stairwell. And we can inspect the vents. Hello. That's a speaker. Oh, yep, they're doing it. They're doing a Scooby-Doo. Okay, we've already started to unravel this. Question is, do I tell our gracious host? Uh, okay, well, we can put you back for now. Hmm, that's good to know. I think I saw another one as well. No, it won't let me do it? We can open this side door, which also leads to... What was that? Did I just see something move in the mirror, or was that just something funky with the way I was turning? It's stuck. Okay, there's something funky with this bedpost. The screwdriver's gonna be my best friend, isn't it? There's an old key at the end of the bedpost. We can't read, like, item descriptions or anything? Uh, we'll have to try that on the... on the thing in the ceiling. Hang on, but... if this is my room on the side... Oh no, it is on the end, okay. See, the... the point-and-click nature of the traveling around... is making this a little bit confusing for me. Uh, not you. The other key. It's locked. No. 
but we do have this for later. Yeah, already, although this isn't as far as I got as a kid, we're already finding things that I never found. Okay, now these guys at the end of the hall we cannot open. Hello, Nancy. I see you've arrived safely from your long journey. But I'm sensing an aura of danger around you. I can tell you're an inquisitive type, a little skeptical, and that you don't believe in ghosts. Uh... How do you know? How do you know I don't believe in ghosts? <laughs> I know many things. I know how to communicate with the spirits, and I know things about people that they don't tell me. Call it intuition or ESP. The spirits in this house are interested in you, especially since you don't believe in them. Watch out. They may give you a rough time just to get your attention. Is that right? Do you think these spirits are responsible for the recent accidents? Do you think these spirits are responsible for the recent accidents? I sense a very strong but restless spirit within these walls. And a restless spirit can soon become an angry spirit. Does your intuition tell you who could be behind these recent accidents? I'm not sure, but for some reason the name Valdez has a strong connection with this mansion. Hmm. Well, you claim that as an intuition, but... We know that you looked at those documents, which would have told you that. Well, you'll be the first to know if I find a ghost floating over my bed. Do you dare mock the supernatural? Just bear in mind what I've told you about this place. Spirits of the deceased can do unimaginable harm, especially to those who don't believe. Now, if you will please excuse me, I need to prepare myself for this evening. At that time, more will be revealed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's my kind of preparation as well. Okay, so imagine as I'm talking to her that I'm just very in her face writing notes about her. Because she's essentially trying to claim an intuitive knowledge of things that we know she could have figured out on her own. And also she did basically just threaten me. So that's all going in the notebook. So now we met Abby. Uh, can we talk to our host who... Uh, I'll be honest, I've forgotten her name. <laughs> no, she's gone. Perhaps gone home for the night on her own schedule? Uh, noon to five. Charlie, eight to five. Okay, maybe I should go to bed as well. Okay, I say we go to 11 a.m. That should mean our host is back. And everyone else will be here shortly. Away we go. Uh, there's got to be something in this cupboard. That's got to be something later on, right? There's my bags. It's locked. It's got to be mine to unlock, though, right? Uh, house haunted. Chinese antique decorations. See, I'm keeping notes of my own. Once a hotel. And something something. Valdez. Secret attic. Ah, so it does sort of keep notes for myself. Rose. Rose is the owner of the house. Abby believes in ghosts. Valdez. Well, my notes are a little bit more extensive than yours, Nancy. You hear that? She sounds busy. Uh, no. No, she doesn't. Let's go see Rose and figure out what we're doing here. This is going to be difficult to edit because I'm cutting out a lot of time I spend just kind of screwing around with angles and figuring out puzzles and writing in my notebook. But I'm having a lot of fun, actually. Hey there. Um, what is Abby planning for tonight? What is Abby planning for tonight? She's putting on some kind of seance tonight to contact these ghosts or whatever she thinks is causing all of these accidents. How did you meet Abby? She was the drama coach back in River Heights and we worked on a couple of plays together. My bid on this house was too low, so she pitched in her savings to help me get the place. If it weren't for Abby, I couldn't have afforded this place. I see. 
I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Thanks for your help. So she has a thing for theatrics. Which would certainly explain the state we find her in today. Tell you what, what time is it now? Uh, it's about 10.30. I say we wait around for a little while and finally speak to Charlie. Actually, he should already be here. Maybe we can find him in the basement? There he is. Hi, you must be ah. Nancy. My name's Charlie. You are riding a very fine line between super creepy and super cute. The voice is leaning you more in a positive direction, but... Jeez, whatever you're doing with your face... Now, we have a few dialogue options, and this is our first impression. Uh, I find that with suspects, it's probably better to start with the more informal, like, sort of chatty response. Nice to meet you. Rose and Abby really have their hands full with this house. Yeah, most of these Victorian mansions need a lot of work, but I don't mind getting my hands dirty, you know? This place will look great once it's finished. Hmm. What do you know about the history of this house? Not much. Uh, Lewis told me it was built in the 1880s and that it survived the 1906 earthquake. Who's Lewis? He's an antique dealer, I, I think. I guess he does consulting work for Rose, like on Victorian furnishings and stuff. Well, let's get down to business. Do you have any idea why there's been so many accidents on this project? I have no idea. People are blaming me, but it's not my fault. I know what I'm doing. I know how to do this work. Listen, Nancy, I really need to get back to work. I'm repairing some floorboards, so be careful walking around. Rose is looking for you earlier. Maybe she has something for you to do. See ya. All right. Now, you seem to get pretty defensive the moment we started talking about the accidents. Could be legitimately that you just don't want to be seen as not capable of doing the work, but it could also be trying to keep me off your trail. you find Charlie? He just showed up one day. It was really mm. odd. I remember Abby and I were in the basement talking about hiring someone to help us. 20 minutes later, the doorbell rang and there stood Charlie, looking for work. That's very interesting. Okay, theory. Theory. Random theory. So, they s bought this house with the idea of fixing it up. Suddenly, this guy shows up offering his work for cheap. And at least he claims that he actually does know how to do all this, so... Maybe he's looking for something. Take care. Now, that is just a wild guess, but... If we were to kind of pursue that for a second... There's also the idea that maybe he'd be causing these accidents on purpose in order to delay renovations because he hasn't found what he's looking for just yet. Uh, Lewis from noon to five. So we'll actually be able to meet Lewis uh, starting in about 15 minutes. Well, I'm not sure where we'd find him. In the meantime, what else is there for us to do? The only other room that I know of that we can really look at right now is going to be this one right here, the parlor. All right, what's this thing? A uh, fire extinguisher and some cleaning supplies. It's good to know it's here. Yeah, it is good to know it's here. Hang on, let me make a note of that. Hmm, we can make a note of this insignia on the ground. Can't do anything with it at the moment though. Famous non-alcoholic drinks and how to mix them. Uh, okay. So maybe that's something we'll have to make a note of for later. Once again, seems more like uh, more like the solution to a puzzle we've not yet encountered. 
But I've looked all over and I can't find this Lewis guy who is supposed to be here from noon to five. He's currently 145. So where is he at? Oh wait, can we open this drawer? Asian Pacific Fire Insurance Company, uh, taken out by Rose. I have amended the fire insurance policy per your instructions. Uh, the CIA is now insured for the sum of $1 million against fire or earthquake damage. The policy lists you as the sole benefactor. Hmm. So if this place were to burn down, you would be receiving a million dollars. And you're only in as deep as your investment. Abby actually paid for most of it. Now look, that is a little bit suspicious in that she does sort of have an interest in seeing this place burn now. But also, it's, you know, it's hardly proof of anything. It's just good sense to have insurance on a project like this. And these actually look a little bit like my bedpost. Does that perhaps suggest that mine was newer or something? That those are the originals being restored and the new one was placed there to hold the key? And I still yet to figure out what exactly the deal is with these birds. And I still yet to figure out what the deal is with a lot of things actually. Oh wait, we haven't even been through these double doors yet. Uh, can we try this drawer here? No. Uh, there is a whole lot of pixel hunting going on in this game, which is sort of to be expected. Just seeing what we can interact with. Maybe here is where we could find him. It's currently 2.30. There you are. Right, we have been here already. It's just been a while. Hello. I was so wrapped up in my book, I didn't hear you come in. My name is Lewis Chandler. Okay. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm Nancy Drew. I came out to help Rose and Abby with the renovations. Yes, well, I'm very glad you're here. Are you a friend of Rose? Yes, I'd like to think so, but I'm an antique dealer and a client told me that Rose and Abby had recently acquired the estate. I'm an authority on the Victorian era, so they were only too happy to let me use the library in exchange for my advice on the renovations. A client told you? That's a little weird. You must know a lot about the house's history. Actually, I'm a bit in the dark about this particular property. However, as far as Victorian mansions go, I don't see anything remarkable about this one. What are you using the library for? Research. This library contains many rare books and documents that predate the Great Earthquake. It was quite a find for a student of the Victorian period, such as myself. You know, I have to say, I really do like the idea of using this disaster as sort of the backdrop for everything relating to this place. So you have the personal story of this house against the greater history. I'm really interested to see where they'll go with that. What do you think could be the cause of these accidents Rose has been having? Uh, I should have chosen accidents. the other thing. I know Rose has mentioned some inconveniences like that wall covering and the light supplies, but I would hardly call those accidents. I'm sorry, but I'm quite busy at the moment, and although I'd like to talk, I really don't have the time. Please, excuse me. Yeah, I should have asked him what specifically he was looking for. Perhaps we should poke around ourselves, huh? Let's just mouse over all these books to see which ones are actually available. Doesn't seem like we can actually interact with any of these. But surely there's some reason we can look over here. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like some insignias are missing. It won't fit. Yeah, there's got to be... Nobody do anything funny with that. Uh, somebody's... These things have got to be hidden around somewhere, right? Hmm. 
Legends of San Francisco, the city's most influential personalities. Applegate, Lizzie, well loved by San Franciscans, both for her cultural and humanitarian contributions, Lizzie Applegate was a talented actress and songwriter who began her career entertaining minors at local gold camps. In 1880, Lizzie wrote and starred in the tremendously successful play The Bandit's Treasure, whose, class, whose cast included Norma Denfin, Lenora Skost, and Pam DeRee. This initial success was followed by a string of other hits, including The Riddle of the Chinese Box, The Fire in the Phoenix Eye, and Rainbow Gold. I can't help but be reminded of the decor in my room. I'll have to keep this in mind. Oh, great, that looks like a puzzle on the table there. Uh... Okay, now, some of these books... Look, there's one very notably missing right there. Uh, History of the Piano. By the 14th century, keyboards contained all the naturals, or white note keys. As early as 1361, examples with a familiar key composition found in modern pianos were depicted in the visual arts. Okay, well, this has got to be a clue. Uh, where is a piano? Have we seen one? What is this book? Also known as the Firebird. We heard something like that referenced in, uh, in the poem on the wall in our room, didn't we? Uh, the mythical giant bird occurs in the legends of many cultures, including Chinese, Arabic, and American Indian. Every 500 years, the bird builds a great nest and sets it on fire to rise forth from its ashes. Hmm. Ah, uh, there's one of those pendants. Anything else here? No? Uh, okay, so before we move on, let's have a look at... Oh, Mahjong. When the four-sided box loses its border... Ah, this used to be my jam as a kid, but I don't really remember how it works. Alright, we'll have to figure that out later. In the meantime, let's see about getting this piece on top of the fireplace. Only thing is, I'm not sure how exactly you can tell what goes where. It won't fit. It won't fit. Okay, I guess you can just brute force it. And maybe the order isn't really the subject of this puzzle. I've just got to find two more. With the ease of that, I'm assuming that's going to be something that I have to figure out over time. This looks like it pulls out. It's stuck. Uh, not if I can help it. It's no? stuck. Okay, what would I it's what would stuck. I use for this? Uh, hard restore WD forty. That'd be my solution anyway. Well, let's back out of here for now. As soon as he leaves, hello. Okay. Well, as soon as he leaves, we can actually uh, start using that computer that's on the table. Hi. Oh, okay. I do remember this one. I remember getting jump scared and flung out of my seat as a kid upon seeing that. See, the thing that this game is doing so far is that you get so engrossed in the mystery that you actually start to forget about the haunting. Until it throws it in your face at the most unexpected moment, managing to make even the cheesiest scare so effective. Hello. Have you heard of someone named Lizzie Applegate? No, I haven't. Okay. How do you know Lewis? He stopped by one day to introduce himself. He seemed awfully curious about our property. 
But he's an antique dealer specializing in the Victorian period. He's been extremely helpful advising us on authentic decor. Now that is interesting. I've just finished writing down my notes and the new information that she gave me on him. But he made it seem like he knew them beforehand. But it seems from what she's saying that this is another case of somebody showing up interested in the property, which is even more interesting because he said that he didn't really know much about this place and that it seems unremarkable for a house of the period. You are now gone, which means we can now have a look at what you're doing here. Uh, the knight, unlike any other piece, has the ability to move on an unfixed path. It leaves one square and arrives at another without going anywhere in between. In effect, it can leap over other pieces to land at its destination. In the example below, the knight is able to move to any of the squares marked with an X. Uh, who has time for chess? I want to play some computer games. Uh, if we had a login, we could get in. But sadly, we don't. What we can do is play Maze Game, which my heart just skipped a beat upon even reading those words. Not because of anything in here, but more because of, uh, well, you know, the scary Maze Game. Please wait while the maze is loading. Uh, okay, so it's an arrow keys type of thing. I installed this game on an M.2 SSD just because I thought it would be kind of funny. Oh, look at this. This is actually a little bit creepy. It's like I'm playing a nostalgic old game inside of a nostalgic old game. And the movement is actually surprisingly fluid. Uh... So I guess my goal is to wander about, try to figure out where I'm going. I seem so short, almost like I'm a small child trapped in here. Uh, but what is it that I'm meant to be doing? That looks like maybe a locked gate. Imagine if it was just this game with this music playing in the background. That would be a special kind of eerie. Actually, you know, you know what this reminds me of? Uh, wasn't there something built into some version of Windows? Maybe it was uh, MS Word or Excel or some other program where you could actually explore something like this? I feel like I remember reading about that a long time ago. This feels like a bad dream a child might have about exploring a house, like their own house. But what is it that I'm ultimately trying to find? Wait, I, I sort of vaguely do remember this area, but I don't think I ever reached any kind of endgame completed whatever this is supposed to be. I kept seeing something moving over there. <laughs> Okay, I think that might just be... I think that might just be a level of detail thing. What can we find if we go over that way? Right turn should lead us to where we saw that. No! It's like we're right back into the house. And what are these? <laughs> no, nothing to do with this? Well, we can step on those things in order to turn on lights, but what does that do for us? This just seems like a dead end. Alright, uh, onward ho, I guess. I never actually did see the end of... wait. Okay, it turned on lights for the whole area. Uh, as I was saying, I never actually did see the end of this labyrinth. Nor did I ever figure out what exactly it is you're supposed to be doing with this. What did turning on the lights do for us?
could always come back through here, but that just leads us to here, and we never went through here. Oh, have we completed it? Is this the end of the maze? <coughs> Top tier security, everyone. Beating this game that's accessible from the login screen gives you a login. Uh, will I have to do this every single time? Now this is interesting. Hang on, let me write all this down. Just in case we can't get back in without playing the game again. Now, hello, I'm sitting here taking all this down. And I can't help but notice a code for a fireproof box. Something meant to survive a fire? Without arousing suspicion? This is an absolute wealth of information, probably a shortcut to numerous puzzles later on. Uh, anything in your recycle bin? No. Uh, not available. Not available. Not available. Uh, San Francisco City Guide, 1888. Uh, and one of them was this, the Golden Gardenia Hotel. All right, so, wait, 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 but if this is Rose's laptop, then she would have already known that this was a hotel. She acted like she had an idea, but wasn't sure. Once again, one of those things that could be nothing could be something. But it's not a whole lot of information for any tasks at hand, I'm afraid. What time is it now? Not quite late, about 7.30. I wonder if we can get in on this seance that was being planned. The spirits wish to speak to you, Nancy. Tonight, I will channel their energies to deliver a message. Meet me down in the basement, if you dare. Please sit down. We really don't have time for this. Let us begin. We are gathered here tonight to contact the shades of those who have passed before us. Gaze into the crystal ball. It will answer all of our questions. What's that? <gasps> who has called me forth from the great beyond? We have. Are you the spirit known as Valdez? I was once called that in the world of the living. Are you the spirit who has caused these accidents? I have come back searching for her, my wife. Whoa. Where can she be? The spirits have spoken. The seance is over. We've got a busy day tomorrow, and no more time for these games. Did you see that crap? Make sure you blow out the candles on your way up. I don't want to wake up and find the house on fire. Is that right? And we're booted straight back to here. Okay, well, tell you what, I'm gonna want to go down there and have a little look around there. Obviously, I know that there's uh, that there's shenanigans going on. Of course, it's very difficult for me not to be convinced with that stellar voice acting, but I'm going to want to have a look around, and especially after seeing the speaker in the vents. I'm in kind of a weird state right now where I'm recording my intros and outros, not even knowing if I'm going to use them yet because I have no idea how long this game is, and I have no idea if it's going to be a series or one long video. That doesn't sound good. Uh, is that Abby? No, that's not Abby. Okay, uh, so this is a different play session now. And I'm very excited to learn what's going on. Who was that? What time is it? Did I sleep? I don't think so, no. It's about 10.30 now. No one to be found, but... Oh, now that Rose has moved away, I can have a look at what she's doing here. 
Uh, Chandler Interiors, so this is Lewis. Dear Rose, what a pleasure it was to meet you and Abby. As we have discussed, I am extremely interested in examining the collection of old books that came with the house. They will help me considerably with my research of Victorian antiques. In exchange, I will be more than happy to consult you on renovations. Victorian homes pose many difficulties, both structurally and aesthetically, especially for an amateur renovator like yourself. My expertise in this field can save you both time and money. I'll come over tomorrow at noon to show you the roof tiles I found for you. I also found a good deal on scaffolding equipment. Okay. What else? To-do list. Pay bills. Transfer money to checking. Order paint for shutters. Measure windows for blinds. Replace lost tiles on den fireplace. No, I'm working on that. Uh, refinish kitchen cabinets. Sand and polish hardwood floors. Oiled door hinges upstairs. Repair hanging gutter and back. Get estimate to fix roof. Call chimney cleaner. Repair dumbwaiter. Fix broken doorbell. Add additional phone lines and order bulbs for front yard. Okay, nothing that jumps out to me immediately. Now, let's have a look at the room where we just had our seance. Something fishy is definitely afoot, and we'll have to figure out what that was. Now, of course, uh, we're getting smoked and mirrored over here. It's just going to be a matter of figuring out how she was doing it. And also, there's got to be something we can inspect here. Or perhaps it can just open. Okay, that's one way of doing things. Thank you. And that's yet another old key. All I had to do was just tap any button? That's so weird. I was really expecting a puzzle with this. How do we have a look under here? Aha! What is all this? Ooh, we've got a tape. Can we play it in this at all? You would think we would be able to see right here what it is. Now, this bamboozle is actually quite obvious now that I'm starting to see it. Now let's have a look over by that mirror. If we come this way, we should be able to come over here, and is there anything we can inspect on this end? No, I'm still quite interested in knowing how you did that. Maybe we can get behind the bar? Uh, no, it doesn't seem like we can. But we now have a new key, which we can take upstairs to try and access that weird thing, uh, that weird sort of like ceiling door. God, that's weird. Was that, was that painting like that before? I feel like it stands out quite a bit. Uh, but I can't have a look at it by itself. I don't know why, for some reason it just doesn't look familiar to me. Uh, now, what are some things, because it has been a day since I played this, what are some things we needed to look into? Uh, we needed to look into that Applegate actress, who I'm imagining is probably part of that charity that was putting on stage shows to make money for women and orphans. There we are. Oh, this is that childhood excitement that comes with mysteries that when you finally figure out how to access some new secret area. Let's get up there. That looks like a very sharp scythe. With that music, I'm almost afraid to turn around. I do not like the way it's looking up at me like that. I haven't been taking notes this entire time, but I'm just gonna have to regather my thoughts afterwards because I'm too excited to go get it. What are you? Uh, some kind of old iron? What does that do for us? 
Uh, I keep forgetting I have to close out of things before I can leave. Newspapers. But nothing I can actually look at. Ah, another one of those tiles. That makes two. Just one left to find after this. The mysterious storybook. She pushed her auburn hair back behind her ear and continued the arduous work. Each pile of dirt seemed heavier than the last, and the damp night air was stifling. Somewhere in the distance, a clock struck midnight. Suddenly, the sound of metal hitting metal resounded from the bottom of the pit. Carolyn dropped to her knees and quickly dug around the dull metallic chest. Soon the lid was uncovered, and she pried its lock open with her crowbar. Her eyes flashed as she saw the chest's contents. A thousand pieces of gold glinted in the soft moonlight. Captain Steubing's treasure, the young heroine cried. And soon it will be mine, a gruff voice interrupted from above. Before she could react, Carolyn saw the backside of the shovel for a split second, and then darkness. When she awoke, she could hear the faint chink of gold pieces hitting one another. She struggled to stand up, but found both her hands and feet tied together. She slowly moved her hand to her back pocket, but found that her penknife was gone. Looking for this? Mr. Niles grinned, standing over her with the knife in his hand. I know how clever you are, and took this liberty to remove the contents of your pocket. Please excuse the liberties I have taken. I'll do no such thing, you villain. That treasure belongs to the Steubing family, and you know it. Um, that's all very interesting, but what I got from that is when the clock strikes midnight... Maybe we should be around when that happens. It's locked. Is it? It's locked. What about our other, other key? There we go, yes! And that looks like the actress. At least I think it is. This is the tale of the bandit's loot and how it came to be. The golden dreams of blissful love soon failed you and me. Oh my love, ride far and fast for me. I'll wait in Yerba Buena Town in a house high above the sea. I traveled as far as the Golden Gate where I held your treasure true, where the rainbow ends in Christmas gold and the phoenix rises too. There's another reference to the phoenix. Oh my love, ride far and fast for me. I'll wait in Yerba Buena Town in a house high above the sea. Is there more to this music than what I'm seeing? Uh, certainly seems that way. The bottom's been torn out. Is there anything else? I can't read that. Guys, I can't read that. <laughs> Alright, I'll try. Uh, although I do see it is from E. Valdez. Dear Sir... This letter shall serve as an introduction for my faithful employee. Oh, I see. It, it is with regret that I must discharge him, and were it not for the retirement of my something, can't quite read that, I would still retain his services. And now we have this, the bandit's treasure. Charitable performance for the benefit of the Ladies Protection and Relief Society. Uh, Tuesday evening, January 27th, performed at Sumptuous Golden Gardenia Hotel. It was performed here. Now, unfortunately, we have spent too much time up here to catch the clock striking 12. But there are other things we can do, I think, in the meantime. A lot of leads to pursue. We need to find somewhere to play this tape, first of all. I think we've used all of our keys, but we can also place that pendant in the slot above the fireplace, so we do have time to do that. 
I think... Oh, now we got a crowbar! Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Okay, very, very useful, if only for the tool run. And I don't believe we've been over here yet, have we? Oh, I was not prepared for this to be such a wealth of new material. Uh, that looks like a sewing machine? Oh no, I... I simply am not going to be able to read that. Oh my god, I can't believe they did this. We dined with the something in a strange quarter of... Something known as the Enchanted Dungeon. And we exchanged pleasantries, maybe, about our travels in the Orient. As the meal progressed, an elderly man approached me. An elderly man approached me selling a something puzzle shaped like a pyramid. It was very intricate. The artwork was magnificent, and I became fascinated, maybe? My mind was wild with the possibility of creating a hotel? I'm probably reading a lot of that wrong, but it is so difficult to read. In my broken Mandarin, I asked about the old man's employment. Oh, and asked him to engineer my next hotel. He became embarrassed, and my something-something... So, the gist of what I'm getting from this, which is really annoying, because this is probably one of the most important documents we've found so far, is that the architect was basically somebody who created this, like, puzzle, who this Valdez person met while on travels in the Far East. I don't know. I, I don't know how I'm even meant to be reading this. That's a very conspicuous wind noise you play when I come over to the hatch. Great. It's stuck. Well, we can use this crowbar, right? There we go. We can probably use it for a great many things, and we should probably... We should probably be taking that rope, right? Can we maybe use that to repair the dumbwaiter? I mean, it is a short length, and it did snap, but uh, anything's better than its current state, right? Now, what time is it now? Just about... Yeah, just about 3.30. Uh, which means we kind of have the run of the place. Nobody's here. And I can't help but notice, don't think I haven't thought of the fact that when we drop that chandelier, it's right down on that emblem, right in the middle of the floor. Now, let's go ahead and place that pendant where it ought to be. And while we're at it, we're also going to have a look at that fireplace, which, remember, uh, that was stuck as well, but now we have the benefit of the crowbar. There we are. Only one more to go. I have no idea where we would use the iron. It's stuck. While we're at it, we should also probably try it here. It's stuck. Nope. Uh, how about iron? It's stuck. Nope. We're at the part where we have multiple items now, so it's just going to be a case of try everything on everything. Ooh. We can look at the piano, and we did see that book earlier that taught us about piano keys. It's stuck. It's stuck. Yeah, well, it's realistically, stuck. this should solve everything. Uh, but you probably want me to do all this, right? Yeah, I probably have to play the correct tone. We'll come back to that in a bit, but first... It's stuck. Not for long. There we are. It's so dark in here. I can't see where I'm going. Ah! 
Did I just die? Hang on. A second chance. Okay, that brings us back to here. Okay, I guess that acts as like a checkpoint system. Yeah, I'm gonna need... Uh, I'm gonna need a flashlight or something. I don't know what I would use or where I would find that. Uh, maybe that won't be available until later. But I think we more or less just confirmed. I mean, I, I got down there, I'm already in the basement, and then I somehow fell even deeper into an underground body of water? I think that just about confirms my theory from earlier, that this hotel must connect onto something underground. Okay, now the seance was kind of obvious, but I'm real curious how you're doing this. Now I'm thinking maybe with those keys I'm supposed to spell something. Nothing in this area. What about over the top? Nope, nothing but an old picture of the house and some really spooky ones of its former inhabitants. Remember when I told you that this game has a vibe? I gotta say, I'm starting to question the whole fake angle. Look, obviously that seance was fake, but there's other stuff going on here. Things that they couldn't be manipulating themselves. It's stuck. Howdy. Yeah, would now be a good time to investigate this? This ghostly moan? Maybe I wasn't supposed to have found you yet, but I know where that sound is coming from. No, I really can't do anything with you? Maybe... Actually, maybe I'm supposed to intuit something based on where that wire is actually going. Uh, what else do I have on me besides these tools? I can't actually click to interact with anything here, but... If we put that back on... And back out... Let's look at the geography here. If that's it right there, then we go around the corner. That is Abby's room. Now, notably, her thing on the schedule did say that she's out from a certain set of hours. I think right now the move is going to be to sleep and bring some of our findings to Rose, and maybe then we'll have an idea of how to progress. Uh, 5.15. I was up all night, basically. First things first, let's have a little chat with Abby. We haven't actually talked to her since her little stunt last night. I hope you're convinced now that the spirits are with us. These ghosts are here to stay. We don't have other dialogue options? Well, I'll tell you what, I am kind of convinced that this house is haunted. I just don't know to what extent you're responsible. I'm convinced that this house is haunted. I'm just not sure who is responsible. Isn't it obvious? Senor Valdez and his wife, long lost soulmates wandering aimlessly in the netherworld, returning to this house to search for each other. Ah, <sighs> I only hope that one day I will be able to reunite them so that they may find peace. Hmm, now we could straight up confront her. Uh, what kind of person is Charlie? He seems to feel bad about all these mishaps. Have you seen the poem in my room? Do you know much about Lewis? How long have you known Rose? Wow, we can really open up on her. Uh, I heard someone crying in the hallway. Was that you? If I accuse her right away, she's just going to clam up. I heard someone crying in the hallway. Was that you? I told you the spirits were interested in you. Was it a woman crying? Do you think it was a ghost? Well, it wasn't me crying out there. Hmm. So, uh, tell me about the projector. 
I found out how you rigged the seance table with a projector. <laughs> that was a pretty good show you gave. Okay, so I staged part of the seance. But that still doesn't mean this place isn't haunted. Seances were very popular during the Victorian era, and I plan to entertain our guests with them. It'll be a great way to promote the place. Okay, so we know now that that is the angle that you're working. That doesn't really explain the accidents, though, unless you're trying to create a story around the place in order to promote it prior to opening. Have you been creating these accidents to help your promotion? Of course not! I've had nothing to do with these accidents. They cost us both time and money. If you want to find out who's behind the accidents, ask our resident handyman. Do you mean Charlie? Ugh, it's clear to me that Charlie's totally responsible for the accidents. Who else could it have been? He's a really nice kid, but he has no idea what he's doing. Unfortunately, Rose doesn't want to fire him. And there's something suspicious about him. Hmm. Suspicious how? What do you mean? The other day, I was down in the basement working for over an hour, and suddenly he sneaks up on me. I bet he was down there the whole time, watching me. Either that, or he knows about the crawl space. Note taken complete. Uh, so what do you know about the papers in the parlor? More importantly, when I invade your personal space later, I'm gonna have to know where it was that you found them, because it was said that your room was empty. I saw those papers in the parlor. Where did you find them? Right in my room. They're so vintage. I'm going to ask Lewis if he can get me some antique frames for them. Rose and I can use the letters in our historical display. Was there anything about the house in them? I don't think so. I really didn't go through them that much. I did find this old picture of a woman dressed in men's clothing. I think it was taken in the entryway by the staircase. I sent it to a photographer to have it restored. Hmm. Maybe that, uh, Lizzie Applegate? Do you have any idea who this woman might be? No, I don't. Sorry. Have you seen the poem in my room? Oh, I love that poem. Listen, my child, to this story of dreams. How does the rest go? It was there when we bought the place. Do you know much about Lewis? It must be great having your own expert on Victorians. He owns Chandler Interiors, a very reputable antique store. I'm sure his clients will be quite interested in our bed and breakfast once they hear about our resident ghost. How long have you known Rose? A couple of years. She has good business sense, but I think she needs to think more about advertising. Otherwise, we're just like all the other B&Bs in this town, and believe me, there's plenty of them. Did the house come with a lot of furniture? There were a lot of pieces and knickknacks left behind, like the books in the study, your bed. I think it was too large to take out of the room. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Bye. Yeah, you do that. Wow, for all the stuff we had, for all those smoking guns, she actually wasn't too much of a wealth of information. She pretty much owned up right away. And unfortunately, that doesn't explain what exactly has been going on here. Well, it explains some of it, but far from all of it. And really, none of it is really that malicious. I mean, to be honest, if I were in her shoes, I might be doing some of the same things. This place actually sounds like good fun. Hey Nancy, I see you survived Abby's seance. Man, that Veldez guy sure sounded creepy. Hmm, so you were hiding out here. I guess. Were you down here then? I don't remember seeing you. Rose told me all about it. So how are things coming along? Anything I can help you out with? Have you ever heard of someone named Valdez? I've heard of a Diego Valdez. He was a wealthy rancher who lived in the 1800s. Yeah, I just read a book on him for my history class. Hmm. Okay, I'm actually starting to form sort of an out there theory now. After seeing her photo in that container upstairs, I'm kind of starting to think that we have Diego Valdez here. What if he was married to Elizabeth Applegate who took his name? Because we know that the charity she was involved with performed here in this hotel. 
Did he have any children? No, he was sort of a hermit and never married. But he was extremely generous. He gave away thousands of dollars. Okay, so so much for that. How do you like working for Abby? She's not bad. She can be a little weird. I think she gets on Rose's nerves sometimes. What do you mean? She always does a disappearing act whenever Rose needs her to do some work. And I think Rose is sort of had it, you know? Abby thinks the house is haunted. Do you? I'm not sure. Let's just say I wouldn't rule it out. But that's Abby's department, not mine. Can you tell me more about the accidents? I'd really rather not talk about that right now. Hmm. Yeah, once again, evading questions about that. What is that small closet in the hallway for? You mean the dumbwaiter? It's like a mini elevator. It's broken right now. The elevator is stuck between the two floors and the pulley ropes are cut. Have you seen the poem in the Chinese room? Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. It almost sounds like there's a hidden message in there, you know? Yeah, almost like, huh? I'll let you get back to your renovation. Hasta la pasta. Okay, right, that right there, you, you slid yourself just a little bit more towards cute. I'm really hoping that you're not, you're not a bad guy. Uh, now we'll have to wait for him to leave to pry that thing off. Maybe then we'll have some additional dialogue options. But the one we report to mainly is Rose. And she's the one we'll have to give our findings to. Hello. I can just straight up accuse him, practically. Does Charlie live around here? He told me he just moved here from Iowa, but doesn't have a place of his own yet. He said he's staying with friends. I have to say... It makes me feel really cool writing in my notebook, hearing the soundtrack play in the background. This game is honestly taking me right back to when I was a six-year-old, just curiously exploring this place, being so happy whenever I made any progress. Do you think Charlie is responsible for these accidents? Abby thinks he is, but I'm not sure. I really trust in him, and I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. All right. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Thanks for your help. Yeah, so I accessed the entire attic of your house. You're not interested in hearing about that still? No, Abby is out from 3 to 6, so we'll have to wait until 3, uh, which is right around the corner, and then make a mad dash into her room. We'll have to actually be really fast about it because time can really get away from you. Actually, we might as well just keep this thing open. I don't know why I haven't been doing that the entire time. Oh, that's why it closes when you transition between areas. Well, I'm pretty much all out of leads. Not a lot of time to try out that Mahjong game. We've got a snoop on Abby. Hi. That's the same apparition that we saw in the mirror during the seance last night. Is it possible that... She didn't do that? Then again, that mirror does back onto Abby's room, so... Definitely still room for healthy skepticism. The rope is cut. The rope is cut. Oh, I see. I could use it as a weight to pull it down. That should have repaired it. Okay, that should bring it up to the next floor, but I don't have time to mess with that now. I'll do that on my way out of Abby's room. And so currently it is still 2.30, so we've got a little bit of time to kill. Maybe I do check it out. Ooh, a whole bunch of stuff, and the very last piece. Uh, dragon Eye Pottery. When the Eye of the Phoenix is in your hand. And it is now three. Hi, Nancy. 
Uh, but you're still here. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Bright blessings. Okay, well maybe if I maybe if I leave and come back. And we have entry. And just for safety's sake, we are going to save scum this. Just save because we don't have as much time as we think. Very easily to get too engrossed. Now, let's have a look. She's got a guitar. Old West Romances. Lizzie Applegate and the Bandit. According to legend, the infamous masked bandit, El Diablo, fell madly in love with Lizzie Applegate during her years as an entertainer in gold mining camps. At the end of Lizzie's performance, El Diablo would ride his jet black steed up the stage and leave her a bouquet of gardenias. It was rumored that Lizzie joined his band of thieves and was present at the Christmas gold robbery of 1878. Uh, blah, blah. Okay, so she actually predates this place. The play that took place here was about her, not by her. Something's missing here. All right, we gotta find a spider pendant or something. There's always some pendant to be found. A box containing ah, there it is. Okay, uh, let's uh, hurry up. How much time do we have? Uh. It's already been half an hour. Uh, right here. This is frantic. <gasps> and here is her monitoring equipment, which uh, I guess she uses as central command. Perhaps I can, uh, perhaps I can play the tape here. Uh, but she already copped to it, so it's not like I'm really proving anything. She is responsible for a lot of it, I see. <laughs> Haven't heard that one yet. Ah, but she was the one messing with the phone as well. I see you. So when it comes to sound, it was all her. And she's even got cameras. Uh, I wonder if Rose knows about this. She actually very well might. If I were her, I would honestly let it happen. Alright, let's slow it down a little bit. We still have time. Is there anything else here we should know about? Ah, this is just really frightening. I appreciate that they let us play with our tambourine. Mastering mastering the art of illusion. Of all the spiritualists in the turn of the century, none was as famous as Madame Arani, noted for her spider sapphire bracelets and heavy Russian accent. In her memoirs, I am the Spider Lady, Madame Arani revealed her secrets. For her, creating an atmosphere of illusion was just as important as the illusion itself. I agree! The best illusions were those that were created over a period of time or anticipated by the audience. As an illusionist, you must be aware of the influence that you have on the audience's perception of the events you create. Now this is somebody who understands horror. Always establish an aura of intrigue and mystery about yourself. As you talk with your audience, try to plant the seeds of illusion in the perceiver's mind. Remember, illusions are about control, and you must always strive to maintain control. The Zodiac and You. The Chinese Tradition. The Chinese horoscope is organized on a 12-year cycle, with each year assigned to a certain animal. While the origin of these animal signs is unclear, many believe that they were named by Buddha. Before he departed from Earth, he summoned all the animals, but only 12 came to bid him farewell. As a reward, he named a year after each one in the order that they arrived. First the rat, then the ox. The tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and boar. Thus, we have 12 signs today. Probably relevant later. Let's 
Gotta be something more. Fortune telling. She tells us about her, but it doesn't really tell us about what's going on here. Agatha's fortune telling for business popularity. Okay, uh, you gonna let me read that? No. Just want us to know that she's looking at it. What about the drawer? Moon incense. When the moon sleeps and the sun plays. There's another. So figuring out that poem is gonna be a matter of figuring out where these symbols all exist within the house. Anything else? Come on, we're pixel hunting here. And I think that's all for now. Well, we did learn a little bit, but I feel like we didn't learn the important I things. I should the spider so Abby doesn't suspect anything. Oh uh, yeah, good point. Right back here. Although, once again, she did already cop to it. Rose! Oh, Rose, I've got some tattling to do. Hello. I guess I don't. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Goodbye. Well, the only thing I've got to do now, then, is... Or wait, 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 wait. Maybe I can use objects on people. Hello. Never mind. I can see you're busy. Man, I'll she just does not Take care about anything that's going on here. I'm starting to think she really is planning to burn this place down for the insurance money. And now that I know her secret, I want to cut. And Lewis is here at the moment. That's good. That means he's about to get a show, whatever this does. Actually, I bet placing the last one there will unstuck that lever. There we are. You ready for the coolest thing you've ever seen in your life, bud? I should wait until I'm alone. <laughs> Apparently Nancy doesn't like sharing. Hello, Nancy. I was wondering whether you knew anything about someone named E. Valdez. E. Valdez. No, I've never heard of that name. But I'll jot it down and let you know if I come across it anywhere. Have you ever heard of the Great Christmas Gold Robbery? Of course, although it never actually occurred. Fictional history, a folk legend, a complete myth. But nonetheless, it's still a fascinating story, even though it isn't true. Now that's interesting. So that's what the play is about, but it concerns a real person? Do you know who Lizzie Applegate was? Yes, I certainly do. She was a very popular actress in the late 1800s. She was very generous and left all of her money to the Ladies' Protection Society. What was the Ladies' Protection Society? A popular charity in the early 1900s. They helped widows and orphans. What kind of antique store do you own? It's a gallery, not a store. And it's called Chandler Interiors, specializing in the Victorian period. I have clients from all over the world, and if I don't have what they're looking for, I find it. Was this house once a hotel? That's hard to say. The house has been renovated many times, but several of its original features, such as the saloon and staircase, seem to indicate that it may have been a hotel. Unfortunately, there are no records on this house before 1906. Have you seen the poem in my room? Oh, that one. Yes, it's just some cheap Chinatown souvenir. Did Lizzie ever wear men's clothing? <laughs> I'm sure she played some roles where she had to dress as a man. But she was quite an elegant woman, quite fashionable for her time. I wonder if maybe she didn't disappear at one point and return as an E. Valdez. Maybe in character as a man. Do you know what a phoenix is? Yes, it's a mythical bird-like creature that builds a nest every 500 years and then sets itself on fire to rise forth, reborn from its ashes. It's a very popular symbol in the Bay Area. In fact, there's one on the main staircase. Do you think Charlie is doing a good job? Certainly. He's rough around the edges, but he's reliable and learns very quickly. He's just what Rose and I need. So Rose and Lewis both seem to have a fairly positive opinion of him. It's just Abby that doesn't like him. 
Well, it's already six o'clock. Uh, I think he should be dipping out fairly soon. And the time it's going to take me to go check, uh, he should probably be just about gone, right? I'm not sure what time he stays until. Okay, you're gone. Now we'll see what this fireplace holds for us. So, 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 secret room. Oh, I can't wait to get in here. Oh, that's probably not good. Oh, and that'll open that back up. When I face this way, it closes again, so no one can see that I'm in here. Well, definitely nobody would have been coming back here while I was here because they haven't had all the pieces. It literally hasn't been possible. Listen, my child, to this story of dreams. I should actually open up a note page specifically for where these things are being found. A uh, lantern. I'll bet if I can figure out a way to light this, I can use it to make my way down inside the crawl space, and don't think I don't notice this brick sticking out. Hello. A spy hole. For watching people in this little study, but why? And who would have used it? Well, it doesn't look like there's anything I can actually do with that information. Uh, I mean, there's cool stuff back here, but I don't know what it does for me. Oh, uh, it looks like you'd use that stepladder to climb on top of here so you could peer down at whatever guests are in the room. Out we go. Perhaps Rose will be interested in hearing about this? Uh, who am I kidding? She hasn't cared about anything else so far. Hello. Now Charlie should be gone, which means it should be possible to it's stuck. open this up. And I have just saved, so we should be safe to come down here and try the light. It's so dark in here. There we go. And now we can navigate around that little pitfall, uh, which, if we're in the middle of renovations, may be something we have to inform the owner about. Wait, wait, wait what, what, what is that? Is that just like a box we can use to climb up over here? Huh. Charlie most certainly knows about this, and it leads to a room behind the mirror! Abby said that he snuck up on her while she was down here one day, and he had details on what was going on during the seance, so he is definitely, definitely sneaking around. Oh, that is so crazy. How many times have I looked into this mirror? How many times has someone been staring back? He said he was living with friends. I think he lives right back here. Uh, which kind of doesn't make sense when you think about it, because that means that he should be here when he's not in the other room, but we'll definitely have to confront him about this. Great King Chinese Restaurant. The King of the Sky will shine his ray. Wow, that was really lucky for whoever wrote the poem. Uh, this is the part in the story where I turn around and find that he's right there. I'm suddenly so, I don't know, <laughs> apprehensive about talking to him again. Bandits, outlaws, scofflaws, and the like. El Diablo, not much is known about this masked bandit who plagued the Domingo Baca Trail between 1875 and 1880. 
Wow, he was one sussy baka. Except for his trademark black outfit and mask. Many legends associate him with the Great Christmas Robbery, but contemporary historians now believe the robbery was fabricated by the Stagecoach Company, since the treasure has never been found. Or is it perhaps right here? Okay, new theory. Maybe this so-called El Diablo, who apparently always wore a mask, actually was Elizabeth Applegate. I like making really wild guesses so that when I turn out to be right, like, one of them has to be right, and it's gonna make me look real cool. Okay, that's all just that. Now that floppy drive term paper... Charlie said he was a student. Okay, we'll have to get back on the computer and beat the maze game again so that I can get in. Uh, San Francisco. Dear Mom and Dad, yes. Uh, sorry I haven't written in a while, but things have really been busy. I'm working now, fixing up an old house. I'm learning a lot and very proud of the work I'm doing. I'm still between places, so I'll let you know what my address is once I settle down. Say hi to Grandma, Charlie. Now the question is... Where does the staircase lead? Oh, they gave us the most apprehensive possible angle, did they? I can't seem to investigate what it is on the stair there. I'm so nervous. Right out onto the hall! Huh, can we, can we do that in reverse from now on? No, we can't. Okay, so we had to do it that way. That's nuts! Oh, that explains how he's able to enter and leave so quickly and without anyone noticing. Have I got news for you? Hello. But apparently you don't want to hear it. I've got plenty of things to say to plenty of people. Uh, most of all, Charlie himself. It would be kind of nice, both of us just living back there. Technically, the whole house would be ours? Uh, okay, no, no, we can't think about that right now. Uh, just gotta get on this laptop and see this term paper, I guess? We're gonna have to play the maze game again. See, I wrote down the password, but I don't know what the login actual name is. Oh, it is Lewis. Oh, it's Lewis's laptop. Okay, that puts some things in perspective. No. You can't use it here? I can't delete it on him? Print it out? No? Really? Now we're turning to our room. Uh, the time is now... 9.15? Now look, uh, we have to figure out, I guess, an order of what these things are. And I have been making notes, and so if we count these lines, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I have 5 here. I think what we really need now is to wait to talk to Charlie. And for that, we'll have to wait until morning. Hi, Nancy. What's up? Let's start soft. Had you come across any hidden passageways down here? You mean like a trap door leading to a room with skeletons or something? No, I haven't. Is that right? Charlie, I know your secret. I know you're living in the hidden room behind the saloon. Please don't tell Rose. I have no place to stay. <laughs> Is this Charlie Kelly? He just hangs out in the basement doing grunt work and just lives in the walls. How did you find the room? I was homeless, camping out in parks. One day I was looking for a place to get out of the rain, so I ducked under some bushes and found this hidden panel that led to the secret room. Nancy, I didn't mean any harm. I just needed a place to live. What other secrets do you know about this house? I have seen some odd things down here, like Abby's seance. 
Uh, but I can't I can't go back and do the other dialogue option. I'll let you get back to your renovation. Bye, and thanks, Nancy, for keeping my secret. I'll tell Rose. I guess it doesn't matter. Although it's not much of a secret anymore. Honestly, I was really looking forward to us working together to solve this thing, but I guess that's not how these games work. Yeah. I guess he's still a good guy as far as we know. That's kind of been the case with everyone we've, like, so so-called found out so far. I mean, we found out that Abby was behind the hauntings. We found out that Charlie was behind the wall. But neither of them really explain the accidents that have been going on here. Of course, Lewis doesn't seem to think that there's any accidents at all. Which is causing me to sort of turn my eye back on Rose. Because everyone we've talked to so far has copped the things that they've been doing. And yet none of it really accounts for the main problems here. And so what I'm starting to think is that the accidents might be caused by attempts to completely destroy this project in order to collect the insurance money. That's the only thing that makes any sense. He needed a place to live and wanted to do some work in the meantime and earn some money. Abby wanted to actually drum up business. Rose. Rose is the one who has an interest in seeing this thing fail. Okay, now it just is working for some reason. A uh, fact from fiction, the Great Christmas Gold Robbery. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, robbery value ranges 15,000 to 250,000 in gold coins. Uh, is that adjusted for inflation? Uh, noted participants, El Diablo, Purple Pete, Wild Obadiah, and Crazy Jane. Diego Valdez. Well, I'll tell you what, maybe now we can ask him directly about it? Uh, if we can figure out how to leave this screen now. Okay, there we go. And I'm still not sure, like, we're finding objects that relate to the poem, but I'm still not sure how exactly we utilize that because we can't seem to do anything with the objects beyond just look at them and note their connection. Hi, Nancy. What's up? Charlie, I found this diskette. I think it's yours. I was wondering where it was. Thanks a lot, Nancy. Luckily, I had a backup at the school. That must be an interesting paper you're writing. I just started to write it, so I don't know very much about the robbery. It's hard to separate fact from fiction, especially when most of the information is based on rumors. Was it El Diablo who stole the gold? Or someone else? I'm not sure. I've never heard that before. I'll let you get back to your renovation. See ya. Given his knowledge, I can't help but suspect that uh, maybe he's also looking for that gold, knowing that this place might be one of the potential stash locations. I'll admit that at this point I am just trying to click around and see what I can make happen. But we could talk to Abby again? Granted, we already know that she's manufacturing the whole haunting. Hi, Nancy. I found out how you wired the house to make it haunted. The only ghost who walks these halls is you, Abby. And so it is. I yeah, we already it. knew that. But I had you fooled there, didn't I? If I can fool Nancy Drew, I'm sure I'll be able to fool even our most skeptical guests. Why did you go to all the trouble to do this? For the publicity. But I really do think there's something going on in this house. I really believe it's haunted. I'm just... Enhancing the spectral experience. Are you sure you haven't caused any of these accidents with your stunts? Yes, I'm sure. I've been very careful with everything. Does Charlie live around here? I'm not sure. He said he's between apartments. Yep. I think he said he's staying with friends until he can find a place of his own. Between apartments? That seems all stuff we already bad. know. Not for San Francisco. 
rents are really high. And, and it's going to get so, so much worse. They can find cheap housing out here. It's sad to say, but a lot of them end up on the streets. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. See you later. Great. So once again, with a lack of any real information... So what do we have to go on so far? We've used all three of these keys. We still have that cassette, which we don't know where to use just yet. And there is the matter of that piano. But I'm still not quite sure what to make of it. I'm wondering now if the keys outlined in that book aren't just a guide to... maybe a way to spell something out? Wait, this one's missing its eyes. It's missing an eye. Yeah, so where would I find that? You're just fine. When the ten daughters are reunited in order. Oh, well, there's one right there. Yeah, I'm just having a look back around my room to try and figure out if there's anything I missed, because I'm truly actually out of leads now. This is going to be one of those things that warrants a save. But what if... What if we untie you deliberately a notch, right? There we are. Back out, back up, back up. Right here. Does that actually reflect any kind of change? Doesn't look like it. Okay. One more. No. Yeah, you don't actually see any difference here. Okay. Ah, oh, that scared me. I thought I had screwed something up majorly. Maybe I shouldn't be standing here directly under it right at this very moment. I'm starting to think that maybe this would be one of those times where we uh, use a lifeline. Hi, Nancy. George is here. Let me put her on the speakerphone. Nancy? Hi, George. Hey, what's up? I'm in San Francisco, helping a friend of Hannah's renovate an old Victorian mansion. She wants to open up a bed and breakfast. Unfortunately, some strange accidents have delayed the project. Oh, let's just sit here while we recap well, the entire this. game. So instead of getting right to the point, it seems like I have a whole game's worth of things I can ask them. Uh, I can actually tell them about all this. Maybe they can offer some insight. Uh, I met the resident handyman, Charlie. He's pretty young, and I don't think he has much experience. Rose is really lucky. This antique dealer, Lewis Chandler, blah, blah, blah. Uh, listen to this. I found a secret attic. It looks like no one's been in there for years. That's my line! This is copyright infringement. They'll be hearing from my lawyer. Alright, I'm just gonna go one by one, and I'll be cutting out all the useless stuff, and if they tell me anything interesting, I'll leave that in. I met the resident handyman, Charlie. He's pretty young, and I don't think he has much experience. Maybe he doesn't charge very much, so he's probably a good bargain for Rose. Or maybe he's just cute. Yep, yes. that one. Is that all you can think about? No. <laughs> now, I gotta say, for as basically like Scholastic Book Fair quality as this game is, you know, the voice acting is a little rough, the characters are pretty much just there to advance the plot, but I weirdly sort of like the idea of being able to call out and have this conversational tone with friends over the phone, just updating them as you go. For some reason, that just feels really nice. I found a secret room in the basement, and it looks like someone is living there. Who could it be? Probably Charlie. Doesn't he spend most of his time down there? Look around for clues. Who knows what he's up to? <laughs> as if I don't already know all this. I found a hidden passageway in the library. Really? Now you can spy on people. Yeah, and see who's reading what. Or get a good look at the resident ghost. You know, that's a good point. Maybe I could wait in there for a certain time. Maybe before our guy shows up, uh, Lewis, and see what he does when I'm not around. Can you guys give me a clue? I'm not sure what to do next. We'll be more than happy to help. 
but it might be more fun to figure it out on your own. Check out the music in the attic desk. I bet the different notes are a combination for the piano puzzle. That's crazy how you knew that, but thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll try that. Goodbye. Wow, that was very useful, especially considering... I don't think I remember telling them about certain things. But yeah, we can get out of there now. What time is it now? Uh, three o'clock, just about. And we have to pay the attic another visit. That dark, creepy attic that, to be honest, feels like somebody's watching you the entire time you're there. And which I have apparently gone to the effort of locking upon leaving. It is at this moment that I regret to inform you I do not know how to read music. Hang on, wait. No, uh, I'm actually not sure if I've seen this book before. Uh, the staff is made up of five lines and four spaces. Musical notes are named after the first seven letters of the alphabet. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we can kind of determine that from this. Oh, I see. I don't need to know the whole song. I only need to know the ones that have these stains. Looks like Charlie's gone home for the day. Or, <laughs> oddly enough, we can't find him hiding back there, so where he actually goes is anyone's guess. But I think I have an idea of how to do this puzzle. And if I can't figure it out, this is going to be really frustrating because it, it could be just as much due to me not having understood it correctly or just not knowing how to read music. So I may just end up looking this one up. Okay, now. All right, so this right here would actually be B. So let's figure it out from there. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that was really, really difficult to work out. Now, granted, I was ready to be really, really annoyed because I always think that a bad puzzle requires outside knowledge, something not found within the game. And it does put it within the game, but it's no less tedious to try and square all these different things, and there were a lot of things that were sort of open to like, okay, well, is that smudge exactly where I think it is? But uh, in the end, it seems like we've gotten it. The bandit's treasure. My love, here is the key you'll need. Is there some information contained within? Well, that tears it. There is buried treasure inside this here property, folks. Ah, oh, there we go! There it is! We have found the message in the haunted mansion. Find Diego on... And now this one's a little bit more open-ended. Oh, wait, maybe... Oh, I get it. It's backwards. It's backwards from here in a in a line, not branching off from here. Find Diego on stairs. That is what I call a concrete lead. I bet that refers to one of the portraits in the in the entryway. I cannot believe this. This is an incredible find. Seemingly confirming the bandit story while also uh, giving us finally something to look for when it comes to those creaky stairs. I have a feeling that whatever this is, it's got to have something to do with that, right? We just need to find the tools. Uh, now, are you still... Yeah, you are still hanging on by a thread, nearly literally. 
Find Diego on the stairs. Which one of you is Diego? What does that mean? What time is it? Maybe we can ask someone about it. Uh, it's 8 o'clock, so there may not be anyone around. I'm not sure. Maybe Rose will still be in the dining room? Yes. Hello. It's almost becoming a meme at this point that she just doesn't care what's going on here. I can see you're busy. Yeah, it definitely wants to call attention to the fact that those bottom steps on the right side in particular creak. Uh, but I can't examine any of these portraits. Look for Diego on the stairs. Uh, and is there anything else we want to look for? I, I am starting a third play session now, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to do. Uh, we'll probably want to have another look around Abby's room if all else fails. Maybe these stairs? Uh, these don't look to contain anything important, at least nothing that I can interact with. I've also got to think about going into the study again, and maybe at different times looking through those eye holes. Actually, now that I think about it, they probably look out through your eyes, don't they? Oh, this really is a classic haunted house. Well, it's now 12. Let's see if we can't have a look. And if not, we'll try again at 12.15. Oh, there you are. Hmm. Lewis is up to something. Aha! That's it! Lewis, are you in there? I'll be right there. Hiding something in his briefcase. Aha! Caught in the act, buddy. What a great thing that I've been here for like four or five days, and this is the first time I've managed to catch you doing that. Perfect timing on my part, if I do say so myself, but that's what makes me a great detective. Now let's have a look. Uh, there's a combo here, but uh, let's consult my notes. There we go. And the other one, which is... Okay, so there's two locks, that makes sense. 4868. Okay, so we gotta do it that way. 4868. And in we go, and... We now have a lot more info to work with here. Uh, there's your business card. What the? What are you doing in there? What happened? Um, I got caught snooping around, and Rose asked me to leave. All right, now what is this? Through our own voices, an oral history of Chinese immigrants in California. Hmm, Gumbo Fu? What's that? Wing Tang. But that's the, that's the worker that was mentioned in the document upstairs. Chef for Miss Applegate for many years at the Hotel Chinua, then at the Golden Gardenia. Okay, so the Hotel Chinois was a different place. Alright, um, is that all? Is that all? Alright, so right now I'm checking tape so that I actually have time to read this. And it says, my name is Wing Tang. When I was just 19, I worked as a grader on the Transcontinental Railroad and saw the two great railroads meet at the Golden Spike. I came back to San Francisco in 1871 and worked as a chef for Miss Applegate for many years at the Hotel Chinua and then at the Golden Gardenia, which we called Gumbo Fu. I remember the great earthquake and how it shook the tall buildings like stalks of rice. The great fire destroyed so many buildings and people. Oh, there's also Victorian antiques. I'm just coming back and checking again. Uh... Hidden treasure in our homes. Mr. Armin is an expert in colonial history of California, blah, blah, blah. Consulted and worked on the restoration of hundreds of California homesteads, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my recent work is Lost Blah, Blah, Blah Ranch. Uncovered 20,000 in gold bullion that had been hidden away during the Spanish-American War. 
Uh, so he's he's on the hunt for treasure. He is actively looking for it. That's what he's doing here. He's on the trails. Oh, what is this? Uh, dear sir, I represent a client who would like to sell their collection of post-Civil War bullion. Client wishes to remain anonymous during all business hour uh, transactions. Uh, from what I gather, client possesses approximately 50k in uncirculated bank standard gold coins between 1870 and 1880. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, please contact me at your earliest convenience. I am available during mornings and evenings. Respectfully yours, Lewis Chandler. Rick Arlen, back with a vengeance. Soap star heartthrob Rick Arlen has renewed his contract with Worldwide Broadcasting, but admits had misgivings about blah, blah, light of our love. It was a very difficult time in my life. Uh, actor admits there were a lot of things going down. I didn't know if it was time to move on. i have been victim of a stalker, and that a teen detective named Nancy Drew was on the case. He's been researching me as well. See, now I'm starting to think that maybe it's a timer that starts when you're looking inside the briefcase and stops when you look out. Okay, well, I've got to take a bunch more notes on our friend Lewis. And maybe confront the man himself if he'll ever show up in this room again. Alright, Abby, you gone? That's what I thought. Now, see, this is the big thing to me. Years ago, when I played this game... I feel like I remember finding something else in here, something hidden. Obviously, I can't rely on that knowledge to be true, but there's got to be something I missed. For example... There we go. She can use this to see out into the hall. This is what I found. Uh, unfortunately, like everything else I've been finding, it doesn't really help me advance what's going on here. Can't investigate that vent either, which is most likely where the speaker's wire runs. The speaker itself should be behind the wall right here. Ah, oh, we can put this in right here. Oh, uh, we can put it into either one, maybe? No, just here. But what do we do? Who has called me forth from the great beyond? <laughs> okay. So we learn from that that, uh... Well, we're really just... It's another way of confirming what we already knew, which is like everything that's been happening now. I'm still trying to figure out what it meant by look for Diego on the stairs. Those stairs are still creaking, but there's nothing I can interact with. Can't interact with any of these portraits, and... It's just so frustrating, I have no idea what to do with that. There's nothing in the hallway staircase, and the only other staircase there is in this house... I can't interact with right now because Charlie's down there. Although I really doubt that'll bear fruit either. Wait. Oh, hang on. I can actually look at the etchings in the bottom of the railing. C-L-E-G-E. -E. Oh, it's going to be one of these, is it? Close. Ah, but how am I going to do this? This is going to be real annoying, isn't it? There we go! Floor. I take it back. We are making progress now. What is this? Another symbol? D 
Diego. I've waited for I've waited so long for your return, but have. <sighs> okay, developers, stop writing in cursive. It's completely illegible. I cannot read this. I've waited so long for your return, but have left our but have kept our treasure trove. Here is the tool you'll need to find it. Many something may your something never run out of luck. The s the stars and moon will Okay, so I've transcribed it for the sake of my notes, but I'm still missing, like, key words. What I have so far is the stars and moon will shine on you as you begin your quest. Travel to the something, something all from east to west, then something back into the center, where you will surely see the sun shine over all the land in perfect harmony. So basically, I can't read every single word that would enable me to actually understand what they're trying to tell me here. I'm making some assumptions here and saying it's travel to the corners first, visit all from east to west, then something back into the center, but even still, I have no, I have no idea what any of this means. So I guess once again, we'll leave that on the table for now. I'm really getting annoyed with how often now this is devolving into like pixel hunting and trying to like get these really like vague clues because i mean before it was always a matter of okay this is a thing so logically this could have something to do with this and like logically from here we take it to here and and maybe we have a benefactor who has seen my frustration leave the mansion now Why? Well, it wasn't Abby. Who could it have been, though? And why do I need to leave the mansion now? What happens if I try? I don't even have the ability uh, so that was just a threat, huh? Not a warning? Uh, yeah, it is, uh, but luckily we remember that there is a fire extinguisher right here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Do not really have to wait to close it. Uh, let me get over there, please. Get over there, please. Oh, uh, they set fire to the documents. Uh, am I supposed to be seeing something right now? I talked to everybody in the house, and none of them can figure out what caused the fire. Maybe I should take Lewis's advice and cut my losses before it's too late. Lewis's advice? What advice? He has a client who might want to buy the place. Someone with more experience and money to finish all of the renovations. What do the fire department say? They think the fire was caused by sparks from the fireplace, since it doesn't have a screen. The fireplace wasn't I on! I told Charlie to buy one. How could he have forgotten? No, I am bound and determined to stick with this house no matter what. Nothing can drive me away. I don't care if it's fires, earthquakes, or Mr. Valdez with his gang of ghosts. Yeah, everything is starting to point now more towards Lewis. We know that he's not just an antiques collector, he is a treasure hunter, and he very likely would have gotten wind that there is possibly treasure hidden in this house from the Christmas gold robbery. We saw him snooping around, pro trying to learn basically whatever he could about former staff of this place. And also, now that I think about it, he's also the only one that seems to be downplaying the significance of the robbery in general, claiming that it never happened. Meanwhile, Charlie's paper treats it as historical truth, only the details being down to rumor. Have you found any rainbow designs in the house? Rainbows? No. Not that I can remember. 
Now I can pry, and I'm going to because we have to exhaust our, our dialogue options. But I feel like asking her about the fire insurance policy is... Well, to me, it just seems like a bit of a red herring. I mean, she she seems to mention something to do with fires in, like, just about every scene she's in, when she opens her mouth at all. But my suspicions are far more on Lewis right now. It even seemed to try and distract me with Charlie just now, saying, like, I told Charlie to put a screen on that fireplace. Dude, the fireplace wasn't even on. It wasn't even lit, and that was so obviously a targeted fire at that box of documents relating to the records of this place. Excuse me for prying, but why did you spend so much money to insure the house against fire? For protection. I've put my entire life savings into this house, and if it goes up in smoke, I'll lose everything. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Goodbye. Now this is the tool that we can apparently use to solve whatever puzzle that document has set us on. But let's go have a look at two things. First of all, what time is it now? It's one o'clock, okay. 1 a.m. maybe? I'm actually not sure. I'll have to check my clock in my room to be sure of that. Are you here? That'll kind of be a determining factor. You're not, so it's probably one in the morning. Can we have a look at those papers? Uh, completely destroyed now. Well, I definitely can't read that. Rose is under a lot of pressure to open that bread and breakfast on time, and I'm worried <laughs> bread and that it breakfast. may be too much for her. Oh, wow, I screwed up, too. Guess it is difficult. Let's call our friends. I'm not going to ask for a hint, but I do want to see if there's any additional information we can relay to them. And sometimes even in that, they say useful things Hello? by accident. Hi, Bess. What's up? You'll never believe this, but things have gotten even more complicated. I found some clues that there might be buried treasure in the house. Wow! Oh, Nancy, it sounds like you've got a real case on your hands. How can we help? There was a small fire in the house, but luckily I put it out. But the old papers that Abby found were destroyed. Things are really starting to heat up, Nancy. Ugh, and so are the bad puns. Why would someone want to burn those papers? I bet there was something in them that was important. I'd take another look at the scene of the fire for any clues. Yeah, that's a good idea. Do either of you know what gumbo foo means? It sounds Chinese. Call Emily, she'll know. Okay, she was one of the listed contacts. I have to say, as an immersion feature, I kind of like having to actually punch in the numbers myself. This is Emily. Hi, Emily. It's Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew? I haven't heard from you in ages. How's Hannah in River Heights? You're not in San Francisco, are you, my dear? I sure am. I'm staying with Rose Green, a friend of Hannah's, in a Victorian mansion. I'm helping out with renovations. You know, you're lucky you caught me at home. I've been traveling most of these days, but after that crazy tour of Egypt. By the way, riding a camel is not as easy as it looks. My editor gave me an assignment right here in town. It'll be on the Dragons of San Francisco. Well, we have a lot of potential dialogue options with her. But this is the main thing. Do you know what the words gumbo foo mean? Hmm, sounds Chinese to me. Why don't you ask everyone what they think it means? Who just it came in? something to do with the house. In the meantime, I'll ask my friends about it. Gumbo foo. Who just walked in behind me? I heard that door open. Maybe it's supposed to be Lewis showing up? Do you know anything about Valdez? I don't think so. Do you know where Yerba Buena Town is? That's what San Francisco was called back during the Spanish colonial period, but no one calls it that anymore. Okay, um, I think we're gonna end it here. This conversation, not the video. Goodbye, Emily. Talk to you later. And we'll call her if we need anything new. I would like to talk to Lewis if he is indeed the one who just came in. Let's just do a full 360 look around to make sure we're not missing any axe murderers. No. But it is three. 
Is he just never going to be here again? Well, no, his briefcase is gone. No, it is PM. So why is Lewis not here? Hey, Nancy. Hey, there's been another accident. You've got to believe me. I didn't have anything to do with it. I just hope Rose doesn't blame me for this one. Who was the last person you saw in the parlor before the fire? I've been working mostly in the basement, but I think I saw Abby go through those papers right before the fire. Okay. I kind of don't you think... Back to your renovation? See you around. I sort of don't think she did it, but it is probably something we can bring up with her. Hello. Are you missing any papers? Funny you should ask. Yes, I did misplace some old letters. But I'm sure they'll show up soon. Okay. So we gotta find those old letters and simultaneously probably figure out who has them. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Thanks for your help. There you are. Just the man I want to see. Ah, Nancy. What a shame to have lost those papers. And to think that we almost lost the house. Rose is very fortunate to have you here. Did you hear anything in the parlor before the fire started? No, I'm afraid not. I'm somewhat isolated here. With these thick walls, I barely hear anything. Were the papers very valuable? Not for my purposes, no. But they must have had some sentimental value. Do you know what gumbo foo means? Where did you hear that? I read about it in a magazine. I see. As I recall, it means House of Great Books. After the Great Earthquake, many books and documents were stored in private homes to save them from the fires. The Chinese called those houses Gumbo Fu. Interesting. Do you think Rose should sell the house? I leave that decision up to her. She's put an extraordinary amount of time and money into it. And I'm not sure if she can afford what it'll take to complete the renovations. But whatever her decision, I will assist her however I can. Mm -hmm. I won't keep you any longer. Good day. Well, unfortunately, we can't seem to confront him directly. I chose to lie about where I read about it. But once again, it doesn't really help us on our journey. Hello. Uh, a letter from Emily. I'm sorry I couldn't drop this off myself, but I'm out the door for a month-long photo shoot in Mexico. I spoke with my friend about Gumbo Fu, and she told me it means Gold Treasure Mansion. She wrote the Chinese symbols below. Oh, hello. You can see over here as well. We have to arrange them in order. Alright, let me go have a look at that note. <laughs> that wasn't on the soundboard. Unless maybe she switched to Haunt Track B. We can look down here as well. But it doesn't... Ooh. Hello. I'm hidden beneath a river of colors. There we are. There's another. All right. Nancy Drew getting up at 3 p.m. ready to invade some privacy. Now with that information taken down, it should be possible to solve the puzzle on the wall in our room, right? Oh, I see. We don't have to rearrange them. We have to select them. Okay, so it was... Rat? Uh, ox. Which one is the ox? Probably you, right? Tiger? Rabbit? There you are. Or is that a duck? Dragon. 
snake. Horse. Where's horse? Which one of you has a horse? Is that you, maybe? Then it's goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and boar. Yes! And great! Oh ho ho! Friends, we have just found it. This has got to be where it's stashed. The poem is the order that we have to put the symbols in. And now we can associate each symbol with a line of the poem. Alright, uh, oh man, am I gonna have to draw some of these in my notes? Well, this is a big step, but unfortunately it doesn't help us uh, until we can find... There are 11 lines in the poem. Oh, I'm gonna have to do this every time, too. That is so annoying. Uh, but there are 11 lines in the poem, and right now I have 8. Oh wait, there's another letter right here. Oh no, that's, <laughs> that's the one from before. I... Need a file cabinet. So I'm encountering a weird thing now where just nobody is anywhere to be found. And I'm not sure if I should be concerned about that. Rose isn't in the dining room. Charlie's not downstairs. It's not five o'clock yet. Even Lewis isn't here. Where is everyone? Abby doesn't seem to be in her room. Is this game bugging out, or is something actually happening here? You know, I had kind of gotten over the creepiness, because we pretty much solved, like, the hauntings at this point. But between that new sound we heard and the fact that we do seem to now truly find ourselves alone here... This is starting to get a little bit freaky. Alright, time to use a lifeline again, because I have no idea what to do from here. I mean, I can't even ask any of the people here about stuff because they're gone. Hi, Bess. Hello. What's new? Can you guys give me a clue? I'm not sure what to do next. You've got to open that safe, Nancy. The poem in your room must be the combination. Yeah, I got that. And symbols on the safe are probably Chinese translations for some of the words yeah, in the poem. Yeah, we've just we've just been through this. The same order as the yeah, I'm just totally at a loss for what to do next. Even the phone's no help anymore, and it, it's so weird that I can't find people anywhere. I mean, what time is it? 5.45? I must be missing something. Some pixel that I've failed to hunt. But I just don't understand what that could be. I mean, we can look at this. Maybe there's something... See, there must be something real easy that I'm missing. Just gotta wave my mouse over everything, I suppose. Oh! I'm sorry, did I not find that pixel before? Did I not happen to mouse over that during my travels? Know that the beginning is more difficult than it seems. Okay, jeez. Uh. Alright, so I've been saying 11, but there's actually 10. Let me just double check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, which means I'm only missing one. The only thing I'm missing is when the bird of fire can see again. I did, okay, all I can think, and there are numerous references to the Phoenix. All I can think of is that one book in the library. Man, where did everybody go? I'm literally just looking at every document relating to fire. Oh, okay. When the bird of fire can see Okay, there we go. That's all of them, I think. See, the problem with this is that I did see a lot of these as I went, but some of them depended on me just kind of clicking a random pixel, just happening to notice that. 
and some of them I discovered before I even knew I was looking for them, so I had no reason to go back and look at these things. I can understand these having something to do with it, maybe leading to clues or whatever, but to have it dependent on you finding each and every one, it pretty much guarantees that you're going to hit a wall at some point. Uh, now what I need to do is put all these in order and actually go about finding all of them and drawing them. Luckily, I did note down where each one was. Now the tenth and final piece should be the character given to us by Emily. So I'll just write that down. I have my list here where I've attempted to draw these out as best I can. I cannot believe they expect you to do this. But so long as I've approximated them well enough, we should have the means to finally open this safe. And that may be the treasure. Although it still doesn't get us any closer to actually, well, to actually getting Lewis arrested, who at this point I'm assuming he's the one behind it all. He's certainly the most suspicious, though it could still be a red herring. Though we've established he does also have the most motivation. Now we once again have to put in this puzzle, which, you know, I, I do have it all written down in order, so it's not going to be hard, but it is tedious. And that's becoming one of my bigger criticisms of the game, is like, once I've unlocked something or removed something, you seriously can't just leave it open? There we are, and now... We'll have to start this. Oh, I see. I have to move my mouse over here. Alright, so... Nope, not what I wanted. You are indeed the first. And then followed by... You? Right? Uh, and then... I think it's... Wait. I think it's you now? Followed by... Followed by a weird trapezoid thing. Then you. Then you. Then you. 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 And finally... I think... You? Yes! I think that's right! Yes! Oh my god, you guys, we did it. I don't even know what to put in my notes now. We just did it. Let's make sure we click on every pixel, because we don't want to miss anything. Our wedding day. Uh, as, they, as thy days, so shall thy strength be. True love and something shall be with you. True love and peace shall be with you? Elizabeth Applegate and Diego Valdez. It's exactly what I thought. Last will and testament for the estate of Elizabeth Applegate Valdez. I, Elizabeth Valdez, do hereby make this my last will and testament to my dear friend Nellie Beecham my black onyx necklace and earrings and the sum of $5,000. To my employee, Wing Tang, the sum of $15,000. To my cherished secretary, Mabel Craddy, the sum of $10,000. And to my beloved husband, Diego Valdez, the entirety of my estate, my house and its contents, with the exception of the bequests above. In the event that my husband, Diego Valdez, is not located after a period of one year after my death, or is found to be deceased, so he was missing, the entirety of my estate, with the exception of the bequests above, are to be liquidated, and all proceeds of said transaction are to be provided to the Ladies' Protection and Relief Society. Witness this 8th day of April, 1902. Now, this is probably not the best place to keep a will. You would think you would want that, you know, where somebody would find it. But here we are, just under a hundred years later. And I wonder what this would actually mean. I mean, clearly that succession was not passed down. At least I don't think so. Ah, oh, more of this. My dearest Elizabeth, only one soul on this great earth knows the... The two secrets that circle my heart. My love for you, 
and my secret... It's always the important words that I can't read. Know that my intentions are the purest in all aspects. I am a modest man, and all of the wealth that I have acquired by various means all put to this are put to the best uses all given to the poor the, the the misfortunate and the defenseless and something am a poor misfortunate and defenseless man in the present oh and i am a poor poor misfortunate and defenseless man in the presence of your beauty you have stolen my heart dear elizabeth and all I ask is your hand in marriage to be mine. Aww. Uh, there's one more that I have to power through. My dearest Elizabeth, I could never sully that sweet name by calling you Lizzie. You shall evermore be Elizabeth, my Elizabeth, the sweet dear woman who has honored me with her enchanting presence and grace. This guy is, like, the sweetest. And also probably, like, robbed and killed a lot of people. Whatever. Tonight, I ride on yet another perilous trip. But always to return to your beloved smile. Until then, please accept this bouquet of Gardenia. Your favorite. El Diablo. Uh, so that's how the hotel got its name. Now, uh, what's in here? Loot! Uh, but I'm not able to take them. The necklace and earrings. Something's missing here. But I know what. Here we go. Here's the payoff to the floor puzzle. The stair floor puzzle, I mean. Not that. Or... Okay. Okay, so this is probably to do with the note that we found alongside that tool that was bound to the note. Uh, hang on, let me consult my notes, because I did actually write that whole thing down. Okay, uh, the stars and moon will shine on you as you begin your quest. Travel to the corners first, visit all from east to west. Then back into the center, where you will surely see the sun shine over all the land in perfect harmony. Okay, the corners first. Do them all from east to west. Then travel to the center. And there we go, easy peasy. Now here's a callback for you. It's a sliding box puzzle, which I explicitly said I was dreading at the very start of this. Let me save my game. There we are. And in a moment, we'll be ready to continue. And we are so close I can taste it, but I have never ever been good at these puzzles. Okay, so you go with you. Oh, and of course, this is the one puzzle- this is why I saved. Of course, this is the one puzzle that saves your progress when you leave and come back. Jesus, I hate these things so much. Okay, I've looked up a guide, and even the guide is kind of hard to follow, but basically it's like a list of available moves that, like, hopefully I can translate into just figuring this out, because I, I honestly do not have even the slightest bit of patience to sit here and work this out on my own. Oh, there we go. Uh, even the instructions were incredibly annoying to solve. We got it. The question is who, if anyone, do we tell? Well, actually, the question is who, if anyone, is here? 
suppose we close you again. Probably have to solve the puzzles again to get into you. Uh, but that doesn't matter now because we have this gem. No gold as I was expecting, or money, but uh, plenty of valuable treasure, including of the personal variety. Now... Oh. Now what? You're still hitting me with these, are you? Let me just take a moment to save! Wouldn't want to do all that again. Now, I don't know what time it is, but there's got to be someone here now, right? I hate to say it, but perhaps we sleep on this one? Oh no, you know what? You know what? Forget other people. Why am I trying to include others? No. This has got to go here. Are we finding the Ark of the Covenant? It's stuck. Call it a hunch. But is it perhaps time for me to finally pay off my embarrassment as a six-year-old? I'm about to be ultimate justified. Whoops. You oh, did I guess what? not. <laughs> um, okay, so second chance brought us back to down here. Why? Like, like, way far back. It's a good thing I made my own save, because that is a really game-breaking bug. Okay, so clearly... Clearly, whatever we're looking for is hidden under these floorboards, but maybe we take... Maybe we take a slightly better approach to this this it's time. Stuck. And to think I was standing on it all along. <laughs> Too bad no one will ever find This is very dramatic. Lewis? I knew it! There must be over a million dollars in here. I've got to stop him before he gets away. Uh I probably can't click on him directly. That's probably a I got an idea! <laughs> Okay, I guess I didn't Losers. act fast enough. Was I supposed to click on him? No, maybe if I do it right away. And you just let him get away? There was nothing I could do. I'm sure there was something you could have done to stop him. Well, you probably had to act fast and didn't have enough time. I guess this mystery's solved. Unfortunately, the bad guy got away. This time. I've got to stop him before he gets away. Okay, let me... Let me go up, go up, go. Hello? I've got to stop him before I think I have to go away. the other way so he doesn't hear the stair creak. That's probably what it wants. Okay, this way, this way, this way, this way, and. What? Hey! I'll murder her. Hey, hey! Get me out of here! Dear Bess, I'm just about to over with my renovation work and counting out all of those gold coins. Lewis was behind all of the accidents, hoping to pressure Rose into selling the house so he could find the treasure himself. Although Rose and Abby may not have a legal right to the gold, the bank the coins were stolen from will still give them a reward for them a reward for finding the it. House also has gotten a lot of publicity with all of the news stories, and the place is booked solid for the first month of its opening. I guess a haunted bed and breakfast with hidden treasures is all the rage these days. Even if there are no such things as ghosts. Uh, I think. See you soon, Nancy. Wow, so... <laughs> end of a 20-year arc for me, finally finishing this game. And you know, I gotta say, that was jank city. There were so many dumb decisions in this game's design. I liked it early on when I was kind of trying to logically piece things together. But later on, the reliance on, like, these really... Not so much on obscure hints, because a lot of it, for the most part, it did a decent job of logically guiding me from one spot to the next. The only problem was when it came to those uh, Chinese characters, where a lot of them relied on pixel hunting. 
and on thing on me revisiting places that I had already been with those in mind. It was very frustrating how it relied on me having to find each and every little thing and leave no stone unturned in that pixel hunty fashion. And it wasn't just like little secrets or little clues that could help me, because in the end, solving this mystery did not really come down to logical thinking. It came down to just getting through it so that I could click on all the things, so that I could unlock other things to click on, so that I could unlock other things to click on until it was over. So in the end, e even though I was trying to think logically, I didn't have to. And in the end, most of these notes that weren't directly related to puzzles were quite useless. And a lot of the notes that are related to puzzles are notes that the game should have just let you carry with you from the very beginning. Now, towards the end, uh, the bad voice acting and, and such and animations did start to make it feel really, really anticlimactic. Like, there was a lot of really interesting stuff going on in, like, the history of the house, and as I said, the reason I came in here was because that atmosphere is really, genuinely something special, and I was not disappointed in that regard. But as for the present day story, you know, there were too few characters, and there was too little to them to really make them all that interesting. The game was fairly small and self-contained, and while that itself, I can't say was necessarily a bad thing. Uh, by the way, I love how Nancy Drew uh, is credited all the way down here. But yeah, that was uh, Nancy Drew, Message in a Haunted Mansion. Um, I liked the early game. Once it came to a head, you know, I, I think I think the real problem that I have, if I were to be more concise about it and not just kind of spitballing at everything vaguely, is that it reached a point where you had to find everything, and some of those things were so obscure that even though there was a sense of momentum early on, you were bound to hit a wall sooner or later. And that wall was very likely to be, you didn't happen to click on this pixel 50 rooms ago. But, all in all, uh, for a fairly short runtime, and I did play this over four sessions, um, I did enjoy the ride. And while, in the end, I think it was kind of tainted knowing that I put more effort into it than I really needed to, I still gotta give credit where credit is due. I enjoyed it while I was playing it up until a point, and I think it deserves credit for that. That historical story, like, honestly, it did tell a very interesting and sweet story that had a decent amount of fact, like, mixed in with myth, and it kept you guessing, so I did enjoy that part of it. I will say, though, uh, screw you, Gramatina, for getting me this as a six-year-old, because there... I had difficulty with this now. There is no way I ever would have solved this back then. Especially since I wasn't taking notes, which, you know, that alone would have made this game impossible. But... If you like this video, uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. Uh, Karen Johnson Productions, you suck. Uh, if you want to try this game out for yourself, it is currently available on Steam along with the entire uh, Nancy Drew library. The later ones are probably a lot better than this. Uh, if you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Wait, there's more jank happening. Is it showing me... is it showing me the voice actors again? Also, I'm noticing a, we a weird thing. Let me know if you guys are seeing this. When I stare at the outline of Nancy... I'm getting like a sinking feeling where I can feel like the edges of the page moving up. That's actually kind of an interesting optical illusion. When I glance to the sides, it doesn't look like there's any actual movement. Or when I look at the sides, it looks like Nancy herself is bobbing up and down, but I don't think that's the case? Uh, let's see. Let's see if the credits are gonna repeat. Now we're solving the mystery of the repeating credits. I think it might actually end this time. Nope, it just repeats. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Alright. Well, I've already given my outro. Goodbye.